What's happening, crypto fan? Happy, happy Thursday. It's Thursday, isn't it? Good morning, welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here. Whether you're about to tune in now live or if you're in the future, I appreciate you taking the time out to consume the content. So, thank you. Today, just going to have a little chat about interoperability, how it's worked in the past, how it's pushed on um, technology of the past. The biggest one is the shipping container. The biggest introduction currently of interoperability globally was a hundred percent the shipping container not that the internet didn't do it well with data but the shipping container where would we be about that now we'd still be hauling it on with ropes and bags and shit mate morning alan morning everyone else so yeah, let me just get a picture of that up because it's extremely interesting. Um, let's see if I can find a shipyard pre-shipping container. And um, if you've watched Globalization, you've seen a lot of this. Morning, Hayes. Morning, Carl. Um, images, 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 images. Just show me loads of flaming shipping containers. Right. You can't actually find pictures of it somewhere, but... I mean, it's no secret now, is it? That we have yards on yards of that shit all over the fucking place. Now, that is goods. Goods. Interoperability of goods. Products. But for the full... It was... We'll go to the fire first, because I've mentioned this in the past. So we have a fire triangle, yeah? A trifecta. A lot of people know everything needs to be a trifecta these days. You need a triangle for something to work. It's usually a trinity. Oxygen, something to burn, and something to warm up. Yeah? Oxygen, fuel, heat. Gets hot enough with an oxygen, something's going to combust. Fact. Yeah, that's your, that's your trifecta. So, what Ripple and Co have been working towards is that data, money and goods, a trifecta. We've got the interoperability of data. We can already move data between multiple networks. We already have a network of networks when it comes to data. And goods is within that. The shipping container is at the bottom. So we've got the data interoperable through the internet. We've got goods interoperable through the shipping container. And we've got soon to be money interoperable through the Interledger protocol stack. Which is that. See it in the thumbnail. Yeah. So I've read this before. I believe, I don't think I read the whole thing last time. I've read it before, but interoperability at layer three, right? This is even Swartz, yeah? Two years ago, <clears throat> layer three is for interoperability. And just to collaborate, like just to instill it on the thumbnail, right? ILP is layer three on the architecture. Yeah? That's what they mean. Not layer two, layer three. So layer two technologies such as lightning and plasma are said to promise big strides in scalability, interoperability and functionality for blockchains. However, most layer two projects focus primarily on scalability and only occasionally mention interoperability. Why? This is just a matter of timing or stage of development. This is actually how it should be. Because layer two is for scaling and layer three is for interoperability. Scaling and interoperability are complementary but separate concerns that are best addressed through different protocol layers. To make this case, I'll give a bit of a background on the purpose of a layer protocol, architectures, and the roles of layers one, two, and three. I'll also explain how separate scalability and interoperability improves the solutions for both and paves the way for an internet of value whose design is surprisingly analogous. 
and I'll all go to the internet. And I'll and I'll focus and I fuck off. <laughs> so the purpose of layered protocols, one might be asking, what is the purpose? It is always possible to agglutinate multiple separate problems into a single complex interdependent solution. In most cases, this is a bad idea. Okay. The internet is the best example of a layered protocol architecture and its design was a key factor in the internet's growth and usefulness. Different pieces of functionality are split into separate protocols that build on one another rather than being bundled together in one monolithic system. For example, the internet protocol, IP, is built upon different underlying network technologies or link layer protocols such as Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Because IP was designed as a separate layer, it's not tied to any specific network technology and is able to work in the same way over many different types of wired or wired connections. Internet architecture layer one to layer five. Layer one being the physical copper fiber radio radio and layer five all the way up at the top. You've got your apps and, and all that stuff, application layers. Right in the middle, you've got internet protocol on layer three for the interoperability of data through the internet of data. The hourglass architecture of the internet IP abstracts away the differences between underlying networks and applications built on top of it. Layered protocol architectures provide a number of important benefits. Interoperability. IP works across many different networking technologies by abstracting away their differences. As long as a link can, uh, can send data, IP can communicate over it. This means we can connect seamlessly no matter what type of underlying network we are using. We already have a network of network of data. Yeah. A network of networks already exists. It's just not connected with payments. We haven't got a network of network of instant settlement of a global RTGS system. Upgradeability. Abstractions enable different layers to evolve separately. While the internet was built in the 1970s, the fact that IP abstract a way to different networking technologies has enabled us to upgrade from digital, um, from dial-up, sorry, to fiber optic, digital and 4G links. The higher level protocols did not need to change, but our connections keep getting faster and newer networking technologies are developed. Common infrastructure for multiple use cases ip is also independent of any particular use case which enables the same infrastructure to be used for applications reading ranging from web to email and voice over ip voip in brackets there uh, voice over ip interesting if the internet had been built specifically for file transfers we might have needed whole separate networks for each different use case. Now, what do you mean there? Can you imagine needing a whole different new network just to send pictures to each other? Then a whole different network, <coughs> excuse me, to send PDFs. Then a whole different network to send MP3s. And then a whole different network to send MP4s. And so on and so on and so on. And if you want to change your language, you have to go to a different network. You know what I mean? For all the different use cases from the languages if it had been built specifically we might have a need for separate networks for each use case instead we have a single internet that can be used for many types of communication layering is an essential tool for designing systems like the internet of value or the internet or internet of value sorry but deciding which features fit into which layers is the hardest part too many layers makes the system overly complex. Too much bundling hampers interoperability and upgradability. So protocol stack for the internet of value. The interledger protocol stack has a direct parallel with the internet protocol suite. Largely because we found that splitting functionality into analogous layers helped solve issues at each level. 
Here I'll briefly go through each of the layers to explain their roles and show the benefits of focusing layer 3 on interoperability. The interledger architecture built in the same way the internet architecture was with interoperability at layer 3. Your ledgers and physical networks at layer 1 and your application and transport built on top. No, we have Lightning, Ethereum and all that shit at Layer 2. Ripple, Layer 2. All the actual ledgers are Layer 2. And Layer 3 is the interoperable protocol. So let, let's even... I don't want to start breaking my... That's my... Let Ethan break it down, Scott. Fuck's sake. That's why you're reading his article. <laughs> so Layer 1, the ledgers. Blockchains and other types of ledgers... I like the physical game cables that underpin the internet. Digital communication is ultimately made possible by wired and wireless links that carry, that connect individual devices and carry data between them. Similarly, ledgers are a foundation of the internet of value because they enable two people that accept the same asset or hold accounts in the same system to transact. Like physical cables, ledgers and blockchains need additional protocols built on top of them to facilitate the exchange of data or money. In the case of blockchains, the main issues are scaling transaction throughput and lowering latencies while maintaining decentralization. Ledgers are destined to be performance bottlenecks because they are logically centralized. Whether a ledger is maintained in a centralised or decentralised fashion, it needs a single consistent shared state of accounts and balances to ensure that money cannot be double spent. Updating widely shared state is always going to be relatively expensive and slow and the bottlenecking will either be the speed of consensus in a distributed ledger or the performance of a single machine in the case of a centralised ledger. Improving ledger scalability is very useful, but moving common and repeated transactions of the main ledger using layer 2 protocols will increase throughput and lower latencies even more. Layer 2, local area networks. Hmm. Layer 2 solutions for scaling blockchains <clears throat> are analogous to the link layer protocols of the internet stack such as Ethernet and Wi-Fi. This layer creates bilateral links for local area networks or LANs that allow directly connected parties or devices to communicate efficiently over the underlying network. Layer 2 technologies for blockchains are designed to enable fast, cheap, high throughput transactions over the underlying ledger, generally by using a form of pro programmatic escrow this category includes bilateral technologies like payment channels and generalized state channels, as well as multilateral solutions, including payment channel networks like Lightning and Raiden, sidechains and Plasma. Each of these enable faster, cheaper transactions by allowing parties or smaller groups of account holders to transact without needing to interact with the main ledger each time. A programmatic escrow. The core mechanism of Layer 2 solutions is a form of escrow. Assets are first put into a holding account, script or smart contract on the main ledger. Then two or more parties can carry out numerous fast transactions by updating their local state to change the allocation of the escrowed assets. Or if when the parties want to choose to close out of their ledger relationship, they present the final state to the main ledger, which checks its validity and distributes the escrowed assets accordingly. Importantly, the features offered by the underlying ledger directly determine the types of functionality the Layer 2 system can include because ledgers vary in the types of uh, programmatic escrow they can support. Layer 2 solutions are necessarily tied to certain ledgers because they leverage specific capabilities in the underlying Layer 1 system. This is why Lightning is defined in terms of Bitcoin scripts. Raiden uses specific Ethereum smart contracts and Plasma implementations would similarly use well-specified smart contracts. Lightning may work with specific SegWit supporting forks in Bitcoin like Litecoin and Raiden and Plasma may work 
with other blockchains that use Ethereum virtual machine. However, each layer two technology would be worse if they tried to support ledgers with vastly different sets of features. For example, Lightning without Segwit. Or Plasma implemented using only Bitcoin scripts. This is completely fine though. Layer two scaling solutions can and should take advantage of every capability provided by the underlying ledger. The closed connection between layers one and two is precisely why we need a separate layer for interoperability. True, interoperability is all about abstraction and requires minimizing the set of features the protocol uses. The fewer features the interoperability layer expects from a layer below, the more heterogeneous networks it can connect, whatever that means. Since layer two solutions can and should leverage specific layer one capabilities, we need a separate layer for interoperability that uses as few ledger specific functions as possible. Which brings us to layer three, interoperability. The purpose of layer three is to ab abstract away the differences between different layer one and layer two technologies to connect vastly different types of networks. This is the role of the internet protocol IP on the internet and the interledger protocol ILP in the internet of value. The core protocol of the internet stack IP routes packets of data across networks while abstracting away the differences between the underlying telecommunications technologies. The internet was successful precisely because it used such a clean abstraction and was able to connect everything everything from phone lines via dial up to cellular and satellite networks to dedicated fiber optic cables and even carrier pigeons and they're tracking dolphins a lot now the only feature ip requires of an underlying network is the ability to send data it does not depend on any additional features or even guarantees of spend or reliability because of its simple abstraction IP was able to create a universal network of networks that today connects over half of the human population. <sighs> Damn! I'm sorry I'm not reading comments, but I want to read this article before the fucking... I want this article read as fast as I can. I'm 17 minutes in already. I've read fuck all. <laughs> now, I'm nearly down on it. Minimal abstraction over layer 2 networks. In the Internet of Value, ILP packetizes value like IP packetizes data. It routes packets of money across the networks while abstracting away the differences between assets in a ledger or layer two technologies. Like IP, the core of ILP is the network agnostic packet and address format. The only feature ILP requires of the underlying layer is the ability to send value. It does not require any specific transaction types functionality or programmatic escrow. Faster, cheaper transactions improve the user experience, but even they are not strictly required. ILP's minimum abstraction enables interoperability with all types of layer one and two networks, including those that were not designed to be interoperable. To date, it has been used to connect the Bitcoin Lightning Network, bilateral Ethereum payments channel, XRP payment channels, Three very different layer two systems. Work is underway to connect all other types of layer one and two systems. You should get involved. Layers four and five are not the focus of this post, post but you can read um, money and data over ILP, learn about stream, recommended layer four transport protocol inspired by Quick. Hmm. And keep an eye out for future posts on layer five and application specific protocols built on ILP and stream. Conclusion, separating scaling and interoperability. Scaling and interoperability are complementary, but they are fundamentally different types of problems that are best solved by separate protocol layers. Scalability solutions like Lightning and Plasma work best when they, lev uh, when they leverage the full range of features provided by their underlying ledgers. In contrast, interoperability protocols like Interledger require minimal abstractions that enable them to work across vastly different types of underlying networks. A subtle benefit of separating the link layer and interoperability layer 
is highlighted by the fact that the internet still works today. The internet protocol was designed for computers the size of rooms, yet it is still applicable to cell phones and the internet of things devices. By reducing the features IP required from the underlying network, it also allowed for a significant later improvements in the underlying technologies. This would have been impossible if IP had been built on the specific features of APIs of networks at the time it was developed. We are nowhere near the end of development of layer one and layer two blockchain or ledger systems by abstracting away the differences between these with layer three, we can build better, more, techno more technology agnostic user, in <laughs> user experiences while allowing for future developments that will make the internet of value faster, cheaper and more efficient. Again, it's showing the stack, interledger stack, internet stack, inspired by each other. Well, not inspired by each other, internet stack was already there. Interledger stack inspired by the internet stack. There's an interesting open question as to whether bilateral or multilateral layer two solutions are better. A surprising parallel exists for the internet stack as well. And this article argues that the internet or at least IP version 6, should have been built on bilateral links instead of LANs. Interesting. Even Swartz, who wrote that, what I've just read, is co-inventor of the Interledger and a lead engineer at Spring. Doesn't work for Ripple anymore, did do. When people like to say Ripple's into Ledger, it's not actually Ripple's into Ledger anymore. I like to say Ripple's XRP. It's actually not, not their currency. They just hold a lot of it. Right. Mornings, everyone. I'm sorry. I not um, I not been to comments, but I wanted to get rid of that. I wanted to get through that first. So morning, Steve. Morning, Chris. Morning, Alan. Morning, everyone. Sapnin. A night at the operability car. <laughs> Princess Layers Six, I think. Yeah, someone, someone, um, someone sent me that. Someone read it yesterday. Did someone write that yesterday specifically for me. I'm so meta, even this acronym. Hey, did someone like? Write that yesterday specifically for me, mate. Hey, because it was legitimately only written yesterday. I've just read something that was written in 2018. I'm, I'm saying, I mean, that was written yesterday. It's like someone was like, yo, go and write an article that I can send to that Scott. Will someone go and write an article that I can send to that Scott? Like legitimately. I'm on the wrong phone to get it up. Overledger versus Ripples. It's the, as I say, it's not Ripples into Ledger anymore. That's why it made me laugh when I read that this morning. Ripples into Ledger. It's not, it's actually not their interledger, Ripple interledger protocol. No, it's W3C's protocol now, mate. Right. The why they're writing Ripple. It's not Ripple. It's not Ripple ain't running interledger anymore. They just, they just created it and, and gifted it to, gave it to the regulators as a new protocol. Like, so that first line, blockchain interoperability project, why doesn't it say Quants over Ledger, but it says Ripple into Ledger? Get the fuck out of here. I'm not even reading it. I'm, not, I'm legitimately not reading it because of the headlines. I fucking people like the headlines are mess. It's legitimately only written yesterday on the 1st of July. So by uh, Toshendra Kumashara, who the fuck that is. Not even heard of him before. Are you a blockchain enthusiast? Learn of the blog, brief education into blockchain actually gets it wrong in there as well. Doesn't actually define the difference between a distributed ledger technology system and just a database and an actual chain of fucking blocks. 
like done an introduction to like yeah go on you tell to rewrite it mate i'm not best writer which is why i don't write it's why i don't write it's why i just come and talk I just come and talk talk what, what i say my opinions i'll just come and say it i don't need to go and write in an article because i'm not the best at fucking writing and i'm not even the best at reading and talking mate you shitting man like Understanding Ripple's Interledger protocol. But why is it not saying Quants over Ledger? But it'll say Ripple's Interledger because it's just some dickhead who's wrote it legitimately. That's all I'm thinking of that. I'm so meta. That guy is a Quant fucking maxer who's not been objective about Interledger protocol. It's as simple as that. Ah! It's not making any sense, Carl. <laughs> Sounds like a Bitcoin Ben story. Can you send me the Overledger white paper? Oh, not really, mate. It's not going to do anything for me, mate. Overledger white paper. Don't need shit. Show me Ripple saying they need Overledger. Show me Interledger saying thank fuck Overledger's gone live. Show me other people that need that say they need Overledger because I ain't seen any fucker say it. I'm not. Seen like fucking SIA bank, like the SIA's partnered with them. That's pretty much about fucking it. Go and ask David Schwartz what he thinks of it on Twitter. And when he comes, when David Schwartz comes back and says, yeah, Ripple need Overledger. And he, Interledger Protocol needs Overledger. Then I'll start listening to you. But until other people acknowledge it, I'm going to waste my time here. Right, was it the, white, the, the nine page white paper? Or is that the quant one? Because I read a 10 page one, mate. And it just kept saying like, yeah, the treasury's going to get dead rich. The treasury's going to get dead rich. The treasury's going to get dead rich. Quant treasury's going to get dead rich. Going to make money off you. Going to make money off you. And we're going to get dead rich. And it's a pro like, you have, you have to pay to develop on, on, on Overledger. So to develop a map, like an app or DAP or map on, on Overledger, you have to fucking pay. You have to stake Quant and a lot. Like a few fucking grand just to build on it. I can go in my house now and start building on XRP and ILP for free. Just for my network costs and my machine costs. Don't actually have to give it any extra fucking cost. And if I went to Codius, I'm guessing the, the cost of Codius would be minimal compared to the cost of Overledger. Thank you, David the Amazer. Top name, lad. Stop shilling that overledger, <laughs> Mr. Big. <laughs> Good day, steady from us. See, it's got about interoperability. The thing is, we don't need we don't need overledger me. Like you can keep telling me I do, and you can keep trying to tell me that I do. what what do I need it for? I don't need overledger for interoperability of payments. ILP's done it. I don't need overledger for interoperability of data. We've already got that in the internet. What? Was over, Overledger actually bring into the table. It is a giant Tyson, yeah. Big, big star dog dude. He wrote it yesterday by chance. Mm. Same they didn't write one in 2015 when they when they created the company on it. You know when Ripple started writing theirs. Ripple actually had Ripple Protocol in 2013. It became into Ledger by 2015. <laughs> But now I'm supposed to jump ship now to the new interoperability. Like, do people understand the the, the, the W3C level to this? Do they, do they understand the W3C? Guys, that's what. Fucking hell, Mr. Big A, that's lovely, that, isn't it? Don't even hold any QNT. Well, he won't be building on Overledger then, will he? Because he can't stake any fucking coins. <laughs> why would I pay to build? Why, why, where's the logic in that? I, I said to someone the other day, so for perspective, for me to run a gateway and develop on Overledger and Quant, 
It cost me over four and a half grand, nearly five grand a year. Nearly 5k a year it cost me. And on the other side of that coin, you've got Veets Vin that just built a tip bot for free and then was given 20 million off spring to continue his development of the internet of value. <laughs> really? Really? So you'd expect Veetsman now to just drop XRPL and ILP, give him back his 20 mil, and go and spend four and a half K a fucking year to develop on Quantum Overlay, Joe. Don't be silly. Don't be fucking silly. I know all that is getting to me, mate, but people keep bringing it up. I'll keep answering the questions about it, but I don't think I'll ever buy it. I might use it one day, who knows? Shame we didn't buy some. Some next year. You pay the you pay the network to run your code. Yeah, sounds shit that, mate. You have to pay the I don't pay the network. I pay the treasury, mate. You pay the treasury, mate. You pay the treasury, and the treasury get rich while you fucking do what you do. What happens when your license runs out? Same as T Fuel and Fate. Oh, really fucking love that idea of it. But then you need a stream key. You need to be given permission to stream on there, so I'm thinking, well, what happens if I build up a 40k following on there and then they take my stream key off, man? The fucked. It's all, they're, they're acting centralised. They don't do, do you not realise we're going into a decentralised world and anyone acting centralised, you've got no place, you've got no place for you, mate. You don't own your own company. Jeff Bezos, the sooner he realises he no longer owns Amazon and within 10 to 20 years, society's going to tell him how he does fucking business and to, to, to pay tax. And all these fucking spending is going to be trapped. It ain't just the people at the bottom that are going to get trapped, guys. Every motherfucker is going to be held accountable. It, it's, it, it, yeah. Or they need to fucking be by 2030. Oh, you know what's happening. <clears throat> Multi-chain interoperability. ILP can't do that. Interoperability between any API and DLT, ILP. Yes, yes, it can. Do you understand that interledger? Pro did you did you listen to anything I read, mate? It's just a protocol. It's an API itself. ILP is a fucking protocol, and simply just an application programming interface is all you need to tap into the payments of it. Like, I don't... When I put a bit of David Schwartz on, I mean, not David Schwartz, a bit of uh, Chris Larson. Should we listen to a bit of Chris Larson? As uh, one world. Um, it's also never been sort of more divided because it's a fire. You know, you cannot have... Um, it's more... Um, it's a work in progress. It's incomplete. There is something missing with globalization. And we like to use the analogy of fire. You know, you cannot have fire uh, without fuel, oxygen, and heat. And I think the same thing applies with globalization. You, globalization does not work <clears throat> unless you have interoperability between three things, data, goods, and money. And the truth is... People have watched our globalization documentary, haven't they? Good, the smoldering thing. Uh, you know, goods would show up in a port, uh, they'd have to be unpacked, they'd have to be repacked. This was an incredible sort of friction point or burden on global trade. And then along comes a very, very simple innovation, a very simple technology, nothing uh, super complicated, very, very basic low level called the shipping container. Mm. In a port, shipping, 50s weren't that long. Oh, cheers, Chris. Cheers, Chris. There you go, there it is. There's the pre-container, the picture I was looking for before, of everyone handballing shit onto ships. And like I said, imagine the friction within that compared to what we see now. In the next 20 years, you had about a 700% increase uh, in, in global trade. And that why is that? It's because now goods were completely interoperable around the world. You go from ship to train to truck without having to touch anything. Every port in the world uh, was interoperable. You didn't need bilateral agreements to make to ship goods. Um, shipping companies were interoperable. 
they're going to fundamentally change the way goods work. Goods are now globalized. We all know what happened with data. You know, before the World Wide Web, it was incredibly expensive to communicate or send data cross network. Uh, so that was a huge uh, point of friction on how the world communicated. Obviously, with the World Wide Web now, three billion people can communicate without being on the same network. That's the, really the key point there. Uh, we have a network of networks when it comes to data and communications fundamentally change the way communications work. But that's not the case with money. Money is sort of that missing ingredient. Uh, with money today, the world spends about $2 trillion a year just to move value between networks or cross border. Uh, and even spending that much money, uh, we have uh, missing app, you know, access is blocked to billions of people. Uh, and you have incredible fail rates. So single digit failure rates on cross border value transfer single digit um, you know we in tech world you talk about five nine reliabilities that's expected when it comes to cross-border transfers of value you're talking one nine so that by is the way this is an hour 20, 20 minute video on our channel if you want to start just cycle for crypto, crypto chris last if you want to watch the whole thing cross the fees full economic citizens by 2020 50 billion oh actually that's listed that ian can't send you know nation is probably not working for most people um, and it's why you know if you if you look at how this is all working today even a wealthy european can't send you know even 50 euros cross border without it all being chewed up in fees let alone the uh, people in developing uh, markets that according to the gates foundation you know they need to be able to send 50 cents cross border if they're really going to be full economic citizens that's impacting about two billion people in the world let alone uh, this sort of emerging uh, Internet of Things, where you know what we're going to be seeing is by 2020, 50 billion devices that are not just going to be exchanging data, but are actually going to be exchanging uh, value. Just Let's like leave that value slide out. Of here right now, we're exchanging data. Documentary, uh, just in know, case yeah. of a copyright. Basically, what him at a certain point is. Apologies, guys. Okay, but there is light on the horizon here. Um, we have new technologies that uh, are showing great promise. And obviously, one of the big themes, and I know you guys talk about this a lot, and this is in the press every single day, and it's, I don't know if it's the most overhyped uh, category of technology, but it's probably a contender, um, blockchain technologies. You know, obviously a fascinating technology. It is uh, ingenious. It's a game changer for sure. Um, you know, and, and what is it? It's a novel way of recording transactions that makes them immutable. Uh, these are basically distributed uh, or decentralized databases where multiple copies of that database are kept all over the world. No one party that uses the database can change the database unless you have consensus with all the other people that are, that are using it. Definitely very novel, very interesting, will have some applications. However, at the end of the day, a blockchain is nothing more than another network. So it does not solve this problem of interoperability or this need to have a network of networks for value. In fact, it's just adding to the burden of that need, right? These are just additional networks. They'll need to be interoperable. Bitcoin will need to be interoperable with Venmo or with HS HSBC's core ledgers. That problem cannot be solved by blockchains. And we think this is the critical need uh, in, in FinTech because again, this will set uh, a new platform for this, you know, again, Cambrian explosion of new, of new startups. So while blockchain is not the answer, uh, we do think it has set off kind of an unstoppable movement. It's attracted so much attention, brain power and capital. And now you're seeing kind of second generation applications of not just blockchain, but I think more broadly what you'd call uh, distributed financial technologies. One of the ones we're most excited about that we do think can solve this interoperability problem or become this sort of network of networks is something called the Interledger Protocol or ILP. And we think that can solve that problem of how do you enable sort of a network of networks to allow value to be instantly transferred between uh, two networks or multiple hop networks, uh, just the way the internet has fundamentally changed data. And I'll talk about this a little bit uh, further, uh, but we think this is really the game changer that brings us to that sort of idea of a grand network of networks where you have 
goods, data, and money all interoperable globally. And I think now we're off to the races on making globalization uh, work and including those two billion people that uh, you know are now kind of off the grid. They now become full economic actors, um, or full uh, citizens uh, in the global economy, and that those uh, devices actually become full economic actors as well. So you now can have uh, devices that are buying, selling, paying taxes. Um, I mean, this will have all kinds of implications. You could argue that Japan will be the most populous country on earth in terms of economic actors, since they probably are building most of the devices and robots that will actually be exchanging value. That really changes the game uh, on how the world's going to work. So again, uh, we think uh, this is all about then head down, let's let's start building, <coughs> let's kind of knock off all the disruption talk that is really actually holding things back. I would argue that some of the early Bitcoin discussions around can people kind of see where we're coming from? Because these guys have been on this since 2013, been in with the W3C and all the regulators since 2015. Do you really think they've got it wrong? And if they haven't got it wrong, why are they all not talking about each other with this overledger stuff? The Treasury is just decentralized smart contract. Well, there's a, there's a video on the Treasury that they released the other day. It worked, it did, there's, 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 there's white papers and patterns going back to the 80s, Tyson, like legitimately, yo Alex. Show me, show me, even I saw, what do you mean even I saw 2022, think Overledge is a good innovation, I saw, I saw 2022, it's not a corporation, an entity mate, like, it's not not like a corporation entity can come out and go, yo, we're ISO 20022 and we think that Overledge is a good innovation. That's just someone on Twitter pretending that the ISO 202 I'm imagining. ISO 20 yeah, an inspiration for blockchain operating system overledge. Ripple's been ISO 20022 compatible since the beginning. Um, it's a tweet from ISO 20022. What a blue tip tweet from tweet from actual ISO that gives a link to their website and all the information about ISO 20022. Is that is that an official Twitter? Yeah. Network and networks into net into operability into ledger exactly my yours exactly. I posted a tweet from ISO. I know I've just seen it, and it's not necessarily an, an, an official account. It's like me going on Twitter and I'll put my name as Ripple, no blue tick, and you're saying Ripple have tweeted. I don't want Scott Pratt pretending to be Ripple. Uh, hey, we're going to kill the banks and you know, we're going to take everything over have been a major setback in, in this sort of fintech. Uh, I want him talking about you know, Codius. Adolescent, uh, chest pounding, arrogant, Trump like attitude about how innovation works. So we got to get down in the building. Uh, with that, then let me um, show you a little bit about what we're building at Ripple. This is about a two and a half minute uh, video with audio uh, that kind of explains uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, I should point out, though, that, again, this is aimed at banks. Again, we think uh, creating interoperability between banks is the key step in how we create this Internet of Value. Again, we were talking earlier, this is like 1994 all over again. And we're really just laying the infrastructure. So we got to get the banks on. This is from 2017. What is actually saying here? Terminology in here. And it's CFC. Also I want the 2018 one. one. In this example, two banks use a correspondent bank to route their payments. The Ripple solution includes Ripple Connect, which is used to coordinate information exchange between the banks. And the ILP Ledger uses the Interledger protocol to coordinate funds movement between institutions to settle the payment. The solution ingests existing message formats like Swift Fin or ISO 20022 through a translation layer such as CGI's Intelligent Gateway or Volante's Volpay. Let's follow one payment through the entire payment flow to send money to simultaneously. That's the uh, uh, initially, initially. Ledger to some other intermediate ledger that they that is a huge, huge
and that kind of thing. The IP and you know, to transfer layers, but you know, most importantly, you have in any application. Right, let me see. Break this down up to uh... verify it at the same time, so that so that no matter how many hops are involved, more importantly. He's bad because I, I go with forward to find the coldest bit. I keep seeing uh, shit at the spot of show. The big changes that's going to occur with this internet of value is that value transfer across networks is going to move from being a sequential process like it is today, which is a huge problem, to becoming more of a coordinated, synchronized process. So a sequential process is just that. You know, we've probably all seen this when you're trying to send money overseas from your bank. You know it's left your bank account, but you're calling your recipient and it's like days go by and they don't have it. Like, where is it? Well, your bank probably doesn't even know because it's it's gone from their ledger or their network to some intermediate ledger to some other intermediate ledger that they may not even know about. And this could be literally, you know, four or five hops. Um, and so why, what, why is that a problem? Uh, obviously, that's a huge time delay. You know, time is money. More importantly, though, that is settlement risk. Um, so there are too many states that can happen there. It could either go, it could not go, or it could be somewhere stuck in the middle. That is a huge, huge problem. So uh, that settlement risk is really what drives up costs. And then that makes small payments that you might need from the underbanked or from devices or just from you know everybody uh, unprofitable and not possible. Um, it, what we change then is we turn that into a coordinated, synchronized approach. So that no matter how many hops are involved, no matter how many nodes have to be hit, they're all uh, cryptographically being verified at the same time. So there is no settlement risk. There's only two states that can happen in that kind of a model. It's called an atomic transaction. It either goes or it doesn't go. Atomic is kind of the key word there. And that's sort of the way the internet works, if, if you will. Uh, the other kind of big thing that's changing, of course, is that we're modeling this after the architecture of the internet. And you think about what, what does the internet really mean? It's, you know, internetworking. Um, that just simply means you have the ability for networks to uh, communicate with each other. Um, so, you know, kind of a network of networks. Uh, and that's a very different model than what you have uh, today. If you look at the way the internet architecture, architecture works, at the bottom you have, you know, whatever network it is, you know, Wi Fi, Ethernet, whatever. And at the top you have whatever application is trying to be used, right? So the key thing is any application can be used on any network. How does that happen? It's because in the middle you've got, uh, you know, obviously IP and some transfer layers, but you know, most importantly, you have this internet protocol which which allows that, um, and that's what you're doing now. To money. Just so for hang on, what the fuck am I doing here with this? All this time I've been doing now. Ledgers, but that could certainly be HSBC's ledger, Citibank's and ledger, Venmo's ledger. Everybody, you know, any payment company has a ledger that holds state, and then of course any application should be able to run on any any uh, network. That's not the way it works today. Every application needs to be built on every single network uh, independently and differently. Yes, Agora. That's, the, that's a huge problem. So IP when me, when the Rockies built me, is analogous to IP internet protocol. Um, and again, what you're what you're really trying to do exactly, is Gada. How long this has been happening? This is 2017. This chat. Well, are you on Verizon or, you know, are you on AT&T or, you know, what, what's, who's your provider? I just need your address and I can send it anywhere in the world. Um, that's not the way it works with money. If you say, hey, send me 10 bucks, well, are you on Verizon? Isn't it interesting if we just pause that? Our visa. Oh, that's the way pay IDs now going. Bob at bitrue.com. Bob at uphold.com. Whoever's going to offer that pay ID or whatever you you. Your email is for your pay ID. You've now got that. Why can't you pay finger? Well, you can now with pay ID. So that's what you're it's growing. Yourself, it's being built. Uh, and again, it's happening. Uh, you know, Venmo does not interoperate. It's great, but it doesn't interoperate with other networks like uh, TenPay, for example. So this is the problem we're really trying to solve, and this is really fundamentally what changes. And what's interesting here is I think the, the way companies compete is going to fundamentally change like it did with the Internet. If you uh, look at payment companies today, what do they advertise? They advertise advertise reach. So, so Visa, they're everywhere you want to be. Well, actually, they only cover about 15% of the world, right? It's not everywhere. Yo, can read uh, comments well easy like this. This is better. And that is, uh, used to be the way information networks worked as well. If you look at some of the old advertisements, nobody in this room remembers this company, right? Um, mm. You know, uh, CompuServe. Yeah, it is what I say, right? So at the start of the internet, it was all about reach. 
we get here, we get there, we've got more members than anyone else, all the partnerships, blah, blah, blah. But when everyone had reach, it was more about speed and reliability. It wasn't about the reach then. What do they used to advertise? We've got you know, the most members, we're the biggest, we have the most services. Uh, and obviously in the internet uh, <clears throat> changed all that. The internet commoditized reach. So now whether you're a big company or a small company, everybody has the same reach. So that means you compete on other things. If you look at the communication companies today, they don't mention reach. Uh, what they mention is speed or service or most importantly, you know, price, ease, ease of use. Yeah, the goal I've realized I can flip the screen while I'm live. I legitimately just realized then, so I don't uh, actually have to show it you. the world, you might have a single flip to provider. show you properly. They're the only ones with reach in that market. And because of that, they can be sloppy on everything else. So they can be super expensive, terrible service, and this is really holding you know back the world. When, uh, extremely we... interested. It could be extremely expensive when you control the reach. You know, when you think about apps at the moment that could be free, but are charging you. Again, why is Overledger's charging you a user? It, it should be bringing the cost down. It's commoditized through of course, IP and, and data and ILP and value. Now, whatever market in the world now has the entire uh, world's companies competing because everybody has the same reach. That's a big deal. Um, and of course, uh, talk about Venmo, TenPay. Of course, Venmo and TenPay can make a deal with each other. And they can say, well, we're inter interoperable because we have a bilateral agreement. Um, but here's the problem with bilateral agreements. I mean, certainly you can do that. Um, but bilateral agreements don't scale, right? If everybody has to get a bilateral agreement with everybody else, it's a mess. It just doesn't work. That's the S8 Agora. Type architecture is, that's and I'm behind the S10 now. That's my selfie cam. So that's my screen that facing me. Does not have to have a connection and that's my normal camera facing away value. From, no from the phone. No more than, you know, a port in Rotterdam has to have a bilateral agreement with... Much better way of doing it, though. ...in Denver to send goods. It just shows up as the same shipping container, right? So shipping containers created interoperability. The internet created interoperability of data, and that's what's happening here. So that uh, we can now take multiple hops uh, and you can get value between any networks without we'll bilateral agreements. Get rid of that agreements. fucking window. So by the way, why bilateral agreements in trade are not as good as trade agreements, right? So we're going backwards in some ways, but we got to move forward in others. So. Um, but this is very important. And by the way, that first thing we mentioned about the process going from sequential to coordinated, you can't do multiple hops in a sequential system. Right. So we don't really need to hear them about ops. I don't, we all know that. Change plays out. I think I want the 28, I want the 28 so, uh, chat. That's all I this had is 2017. Is, uh, as far as what I wanted to talk about, I'm of course happy to Net values, game changer. All right. I was 2018, bit of Q and A. You know, there's a couple of things. Bit of Q&A. The note. Got us to 2018. Like I say, if you want to watch this full video, guys, just search um, okay, so, you know, okay. Chris so Larson, Love for Crypto. So, you know, we can see how... Come on. You enabled your... Where's the next chat of it? Chain revolution. Right, here we go. Uh, really representing what we think the here big we go. thing is that... Uh, we're trying to pay attention to and how it's going to change the world. And then I'll talk uh, briefly about the core technologies that we're betting on, uh, given that vision that, that we see kind of uh, uh, before us. So first of all, uh, Ripple is one of the first blockchain companies. Um, we're about 240 uh, employees headquartered in San Francisco, which many of you know is a city about three hours north of here, uh, maybe four hours. Uh, okay, sometimes that gets a laugh. Um, we have uh, eight, eight offices uh, throughout the world, uh, and we're growing very rapidly. We're really focused on the enterprise applications of blockchain technology and blockchain derivative technologies, specifically for cross-border payments. We think everything starts with a payment, so a lot of the use cases that we're talking about, we think uh, re they really need to have a payments uh, solution first, and then we can really kind of grow from, from there. And, you know, we're really focused on how this technology can solve problems. We cross-border payments <coughs> really a problem. Yeah, I appreciate it, I want this about Codius. Uh, it's the truth. Any, anything to anywhere, man. Like, that. legitimately so is. That, 
where I first heard it, this 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 chat. Trading is not for everyone, bad. but if you are a trader, plus five hundred is the place for you. Not everyone wants to be a trader, mate. Go away. You know, on IBM's blockchain, right? This is, but it may improve some things, right? And we're not going to tokenize everything, right? We're going to tokenize things where it solves a problem, but not everything's going to be tokenized. So clearly, there's a lot of hype, but you got to admit, I mean, this something fundamental is happening here. Uh, I think we all feel that in our bones, right? There's something very big. You're not going to have this much money, this much talent uh, globally that's going into this space unless something really fundamental is a fucking shit picture. And that, we, we see it as we think this really represents the final step in globalization. And I think we all know globalization has not uh, been very popular lately. Uh, at the same time, I think we all know there's no future for our world unless we're more global, we're more interoperating more on an international basis. We've got to fix some things. It's definitely a utility in its time, and it's thing. a lot more to do with that complete. than anything right? else. It's a work in progress. Volume. And we kind of use the example of, you know, you can't have fire without fuel oxygen. Why is that picture heat, so shit and now? You can't have uh, globalization that works uh, without a global system and three key things data, goods, and money. And the truth is we only have that today in two of those things, data and goods. We don't have it in money. So globalization is kind of a lot of potential, but it's not really delivering yet on what it, on what it could do. We've got to complete uh, this picture. And if you think about it, these other two things, you know, they're fairly recent as well. Data and goods, they were, we didn't always have a global system uh, of data and goods and think about right, so this is everything again we've just seen it's to, to bear in mind it's the same I, conversations he's giving different he's given the same presentation multiple times to, to different people at different places uh, that everybody bear in mind this is before brad garland out or just after he left and brad garland house for over so he was throwing in a ledger out while brad garland house was four cents to move a shirt all the way across taking over ripple now now of course there's some applications Again, we've seen this. Try sending 50 people. cents, machine to machine payments. I start talking a lot more about that. Just like we used to talk about AOL CompuServe, and then we switched to talk about the net. I think interoperability is going to be shifting uh, the balance a little bit more that way. And of course, smart contracts are going to play a picture there. So it's those three things. Um, but blockchains and digital assets are a core part again. of it as well. So let me, let me talk about what technologies we're making a bet on. I'll talk. Let me talk first about uh, which blockchain. You probably guess which one. Obviously, uh, at top, yeah. Um, so first of all, we think the key requirements for any blockchain that's going to be part of this new global system got to be open source, so that it can be stress tested. Everybody can see what's going on. It's got to be decentralized. So there's no counterparty. It's got to be permissionless, so anybody can run a node, anybody can run a validator, anybody can be a miner. It's got to be re reliable and secure. It's got to have a lot of history. Uh, where it's worked for payments, which again, we think are the killer app. We think that's where it all starts for payments. We think that. So again, got to be reliable, got to be secure, got to have a lot of history. Like he already knows that that's what the people he's talking to required. And like I say, the, the XRPL, by the time they've done the ISO migration, will have 10 years of that history. So this ledger they're betting on, yeah, is XRPL. But anything anyone says, oh, well, XRP can't do this. It don't do them kind of smart contracts. Well, the other technologies they're betting on, like ILP and Codius, can do that. So the trifecta works together again. It's all in freeze. There's additional requirements. You've got to have settlement predictability. You've got to have consistent low costs. You've got to have high thro throughput. And we think you have to have low energy consumption. Okay, so let me talk uh, a little bit then about how we see these and why we're betting uh, as you may have guessed, uh, the XRP ledger and XRP is the digital so, asset of choice. This is all about the speed and reliability it's now. Like pretty much, people know that. Providers. The other key thing is uh, that the blockchain will have to be deterministic. It can't be changed, right? And not probabilistic. Uh, Bitcoin is a probabilistic uh, blockchain, so that's going to be important for payment uh, providers as well. Energy consumption. This is actually very important. So I think as we know, Bitcoin uses it's using a consensus. Again, this is why we streamlined it all in the documentary because it is means that you're not wasting your a lot to take in, in bulk. On, you know, for utility companies and, and for mining. You it can instead go into the ecosystem, which hopefully is liquidity at the end of the day. I think liquidity is really what drives value here. So that's that's an important feature there. 
And that's why we have chosen uh, to, to build products on the XRP ledger, uh, products like XRapid, that's a component of RippleNet. Um, that allows uh, payment providers to lower the cost of liquidity for their global payments. Uh, so it allows, for example, a bank that's trying to send money to uh, Mexico to use XRP as uh, the intermediate uh, uh, currency. They don't necessarily have to hold XRP, but it's used to make things very efficiently. So in, in this example, um, a customer going to a remittance company in the U.S., uh, those dollars now are uh, exchanged into XRP through Bittrex, uh, which is a great exchange. It's immediately settled in XRP in seconds. Uh, Bitso uh, is an exchange that provides an exchange between XRP and Mexican peso that now can be delivered to a Mexican bank. Morning, my call. System in Mexico allows that to uh, go into the customer's account very quickly. This oh, now allows West, that, in it, let me try and, and their customers to move value in one to two minutes losing focus, days, or a process that might mask those days focus. without the charge for the settlement risk. And, and focus. So uh, that, that provides a lot of Bolts efficiency. And However, that's not the complete... Oh, it's that right. light so coming in. About it, the other it, components it, of this internet of value. It's the light in the window, man. Us. It's very, very important. It has to be an efficient one. Equally as important, though, is this, again, a big problem in payments is you don't have interoperability between networks. So it's really tough to move value between either networks or countries. Again, it's going on uh, a ledger now. Chains as well, right? And, of course, blockchains can't solve this problem, right? Because blockchains are networks themselves. As networks, they can't be a network of networks. Um, in fact, they even make the problem worse because now there's more of them, right? So you have uh, more networks than they have interoperability. Well, that's so we need some kind of an internet protocol for view, payments uh, that is going to connect all of these various networks and can do multi-hop. You have to move away from bilateral agreements, for example. Our bet is that interledger protocol is going to be protocol. the protocol choice for interoperability. Um, and the way this works, this is actually a derivative of And it came <clears throat> to make us think, so in 2018, it's not, it's, it's their choice. It, they, they think it's going to become choice where it's already been in the hands of the W3C at three years at this point. It's like, well, as a choice already not, does he know the choice has been made? It's, that's what started making us think like it, the choice has been made. It's there with the W3C. So he, he's, kind of, he's like, he knows. Blockchains, you wouldn't have had interledger protocol unless there had been Bitcoin and other blockchains. Um, and it uses cryptographic conditions so that one network can send value to another network without anybody in between. The cryptographic conditions have to be met before uh, value can move. And that, it, it settles instantly. And it can be used in any ledger. It can be used in a central you know, HSBC, Bank of America's ledgers, Bitcoin, a distributed ledger, anything, it can move any type of value, dollars, RMB, Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, gold, whatever, any kind of value can be moved. Whatever. It's a protocol that's been underway for many, many years. It's a completely open protocol, it's as decentralized as you can possibly so we get. Say. Um, there's a group called the WC3 that is uh, helping with the standard around uh, the protocol. There's almost 300 organizations that are contributors to it. So our bet is that this is going to be a successful interoperability uh, protocol, a key uh, component of this Internet of Value. And the way we see this is, again, we're talking a lot about blockchains, almost like we used to talk about AOL and CompuServe. But we really think the architecture here is going to look a lot like Internet architecture, where you have, you know, uh, the networks uh, on the bottom all uh, interoperating through a common IP protocol. You have the transport layers, then you have the applications. We think that's exactly how this is going to play out with this Internet of Value, um, where you've got to have uh, the ledgers at the bottom, whether that be a bank's ledger, a remittance company ledger, a mobile money, blockchains, of course, all interoperating through uh, interledger ILP, for example. I won't go into the transport layers, uh, but the applications would be would be at the top. So we think that's a good model for how this is going to play out. We think the conversation is going to start shifting to be a little bit more inclusive of blockchains, interoperability, and then finally the last part, smart contracts. So big, you know, believers that also smart contracts will play a key role. 
Um, our bet would be on a technology called Codius, kind of a derivative of Intraledger. Um, the difference is here between, uh, and so we're getting some really good scale, the difference is here between, let's say, uh, you know, uh, smart contracts on Ether, uh, which have to be on that blockchain using that currency, using a specific language, is it's completely neutral. It can be used, again, on any blockchain. It can be used as a hosting protocol. It can use any language. It can use any uh, currency. So we think that's going to be an important uh, last component. We think all three of those things, the blockchains, the interoperability, and the smart contracts, equal an internet of value. I don't know if you want to use an analogy. I guess the blockchains are like these new fancy ports. Uh, Interledger is like uh, the shipping container. And I guess the smart contracts are like the robots, you know, moving around the port, I guess, if you want to use that, uh, that same analogy. And we think that this now becomes the platform for tons of other things, right? So when we're talking about lending, we're talking about securities, those really can't happen until you get the fundamentals of that payment platform, that internet of value uh, completed. So I know we're just about out of time and I do apologize. I've got to race back up to the city for a, another. There is actually another one. So if we bo -bo -bom, he's, he's having another chat there. New technology rails. So I want to start by just asking you to talk them. Broadly. So if we uh, if I just go back on that, so yeah, it was 2017 at the Haas School of Business. Then at um, CFCon USA 2018 was the second one, and then a conversation um, with Joe Amber for Barefoot Innovation Group and at FinTech USA World Leading Event, and then with. Uh, Got a right few documents in the bottom. There we go. Like Ripple files, treasury calls. Do you know what I mean? Like this is what people, this is what we're dealing with. Oh, open with drive. This is a call to action. Ripple Labs Inc. Her Majesty's Treasurer. December 2014. Call to action, the Ripple Protocol. The Ripple Protocol's enabled payment in any fiat or virtual currency, including the math-based virtual currency developed by Ripple Labs, XRP. <clears throat> we can go back. And, and it's, they sent one to the Australian as well, didn't they? That was the next one up, Australia. Open with Drive, Ripple Lab, same again. Senate inquiry to digital currency, November 2014. Six years ago, talking to like, do you know what I mean? People are, <clears throat> oh, that's what's led us to do, what led us to do globalization documentary. Boats and hoes, boats and hoes, morning, morning, John M, morning, night ghost. So yeah, we're just having a little chat about interoperability, um, internet of value, how long it's been under construction, should we say. <clears throat> Chris Larson, on it mate, for ages. We read through David Schwartz. Even Schwartz, sorry, even Schwartz article on Medium about layer three interoperability. But Ripple of Intergalactic Protocol Night Ghost. I say Ripple have created their own trifecta. So when people say, well, I mean, that code XRPL from Larson's mouth himself, people that created it. XRPL, ILP, and Codius work together as a trifecta for the whole lot of internet of value. Anything below that can be done on the current internet. That's what people need to get in their head. Like we've got, we've already got an internet. We've got the data, interoperability of data. We've got the interoperability of goods, shipping container. We just need that value. Just need interoperability of value as well as interoperable smart contracts, which can be made on Codius. Now, you heard him yourself, you can run your own XRPL node. It's basically just the cost of setting up the server and shit. Run a validator node, 
you can run a Coldius host at I believe a small cost. You can build on Coldius, not only smart contracts, but smart programs that work across like what they're apparently saying about Overledger. That's what it sounds like over an OS to, to build dApps and, and maps. Well, Codius does that and is extremely complemented by ILP and XRPL because they're built to work as a trifecta. Once you're onto that trifecta of XRP, ILP and Codius, I don't believe you need anything else. And like I keep saying, every developer I speak to who's building an app around uh, DLT and interoperability of value, they, they, they say that's all they need. Codius, ILP and XRPL. They use Spring Software Development Kits and stuff. Which again, it's, it's no coincidence that when you read this article on Medium, it gives you the option at the bottom to follow even Schwartz who wrote it. But then also to follow Spring. Ripple's ecosystem initiative to build the internet of value. I pointed you all at the documents before, the software development kits and everything. Everyone can just download them and start building and download Hyperledger and start building and link it all together to have your own interoperable network that's then interoperable with other networks. It's just a matter of learning a little bit of code. Now we've said, if you don't want to be a coder, I don't really want to be a coder necessarily. I wouldn't mind learning a little bit of it along the way. And I'm going to, but I kind of like need, and I know a coder, there's, there's coders down south that I'm going to speak to and um, just understand it a little bit better and then let them run a little bit with it. But teach me what they're doing, show me what they're doing, and then I can teach and show other people how to do it themselves. Yeah, where is the floor, eh, Tyson? What is the true bottom and when are we going to hit it, eh? You're lagging or go You're probably not me. It's probably just me again with the comments. Apologies. I've missed the comment. Missed the question. Or you might legitimately be lagging, don't get me wrong, but it's usually just me. Do you think elections are going to affect anything anyway? Just a puppet show agenda has been decided along with. It's an hard one, isn't it, with elections these days, I think. You're voting for the, one of the sides of the same coin, aren't you, at the moment, or in the past. Maybe at the moment it seems like stuff that the higher-ups and the elites never expected to happen has happened, i.e. Brexit and Trump getting in being a main two, 2016, four years ago, got a fundamental change in politics, like it rocked politics. The fact that the British uh, voted out of the EU and the whole of America, vote, uh, most of America voted Trump in. It rocked the elites, I think, and it rocks the people in charge. So I don't know if you still are voting for the, for the same side of the, for one side of the same coin anymore. They might actually be introducing a different coin. Now, definitely 100%, once decentralized uh, voting through consensus comes in, we will start actually getting official results and hopefully start governing the country is the way they're supposed to be governed, but... <sighs> Chris, mate. Get a down on paper, mate, and get at the Apollo, lad. XRP comedy night. <laughs> no shit. Say it, real talk. <laughs> real fucking talk, mate. Get a few beers down, you just got on stage, you just throw some of them out, mate. And you... <sighs> XRP comedy night. You, you're done, mate. There, there's your new job, lad. <laughs> YouTube set up. XRP Comedy. <laughs> it's an actor Larson. Oh, that's gold. <laughs> oh, bear in mind, if you make me laugh too much, you're going to get a couple of minutes of me having to recompose myself. Like I have to re like sometimes after we all that how how much you actually make me laugh. <clears throat> right, the thing is, boo, I don't understand why the voting app's not already there. Granted, maybe not have the DLT ready to continuously track it and all that. But why is the app 
not already there and, and then there'd at least be some data and analytics through the app like does Halifax not agree that when I put my thumb on here it's Scott entering their app and they let me move my money otherwise why are they letting me move why are they letting some random thumb move my money it's Scott's thumb in it Scott Pratt thumb so Halifax are going to let me in and move my money. Why the fuck can I not use the same thumb to vote? Legitimately already, the tracking and the analytical tracking of it is completely different once it goes on a DLT database and shit. It's there, it's immutable. It can't be, it's not on someone, it's not on an app server. Where it could be like, oh, just change their numbers a little bit there before they fucking look. You know what I mean? Like that, it could still be corrupted on an app. Don't get me wrong. But mail-in votes, come on. Mail-in votes? Really? <laughs> Pencil X's, come on, like it's 2020, it, like the, it, it will not be the same in 2024, this is what we can say about voting, I truly, truly believe we can say this, it will not be the same as what, how we do it now, by the 2024 election, it just won't, it, it, it will have moved on by then, like people will be, technology can do it now, get it done. But again, it will be, it'll come down to us building official digital IDs then. But again, what apps do they get built on? <clears throat> Soros has had his day though, anime. I think it's time they realise that it's too much of what they do is getting out. Surely he's got to be in court soon for the payments he's been given, he's given to certain organisations. Because if people are seeing the payments... Why, why is why is it not why is it not being pulled in for questioning? And once it goes on blockchain, this is the thing. Are you willing to let the government see your spending? If you can look at George Soros' spending, like anyone can look at his. If if we just go in, in privacy security in it. What's privacy? What's security? You want to see his payments and what he's sending to organizations and stuff but we wouldn't really want the person at the top of the street being able to see what we spend everything we spend money on you know when you're buying that dildo or you're buying that pocket pusser <laughs> like real talk you were, you were or like to see someone else's spend it how does it how does it yeah it becomes a point where an authorization or some other network needs to be able to like call on some information in it like how they do it now with it with a with a keywords and the searches like i oh, would it not just be the same through the blockchain <clears throat> yeah government gateway legitimately should just be setting up digital ids like legitimately it's the gateway an app like they should just have a government gateway app where you do your KYC and set you set your gateway up. Stop it, Catholic Church. You can go to confession on Twitter. Can you? Like legitimately. Antifa chanting Soros wears our money. Is that legit? Did they actually do that? <laughs> I've been looking at cars expensive. <laughs> I see you two for one deal, mate. Like, buy the pocket pussy, get the dildo for free. It was like you couldn't resist it, mate. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. You bring out, you bring out the dog in me, you car. You know what I 100% that phone, let's give this phone some battery. Or some charge. I'm giving it battery ammo. Dickhead. Amazon, you can't tell what's bar, but you can. Your order, your order is stress. So, like, would it just be, oh, we spend that on Amazon? It's like, well, do you trust that Amazon don't sell anything illegal? And you can't see his purchase, or do you view his purchase to make sure he's not buying something illegal? Who gets like 
customs stop shit illegal coming into the country but should it not just be stopped at the purchase just be like listen bro you shouldn't like i bought truffles paid for truffles and don't get me wrong i got warned that they might not be allowed in the country i was like i'll take the chance because it was like fucking said 60 percent chance of something in the uk so i just bought them and then they got they got they got confiscated value gone money gone so it's like would it not have been better if the, the uk customs just stepped in at the point of purchase and was like look scott don't listen to this fucking website 60 percent bullshit 100 percent we're not letting you get them truffles don't buy me it's illegal well, all right and we find the systems to make truffles fucking legal do you know what i mean it's at what point does does this regulation and all that how deep does it actually fucking go when it when it comes to who gets to see what talking about world of pedophiles guys we need we need some transparency here Confess to being an XRP maxer. Not really XRP maxer, otherwise that's all we'd hold in it. In it, net of value maxing me. Government survey side, but it could be linked to the gateway that we use to tax pension passports and driving licenses. Yeah, they all need, they, they, it does all need merging into an easier system. It doesn't send you this big, long, dirty, ridiculous number that you have to keep tabs on. Like your banking app, you just, you just put your thumb on it, or your face there, or your thumb and your face, or the pin code, and you're into your banking app, you can move your value. Why can't you just... Show your face to your phone and be in an app, you can prove your identity. We talk about it all the time, but how long is it actually going to take? <clears throat> that is another form of interoperability right through it. Interoperability of identity. Any corporation, organisation, government entity... Seeing you as the person you are n by nothing but scanning your face or phone or face and phone or you just boom sending a little thing deep face exactly how does how does facial recognition facial recognition is more live recognition in it? it's off a camera and shit and it was live so pre edit after ain't gonna do shit and people will be able to tell. Like, experts can tell if a video is officially the video that the camera shot or if it's been edited and, and shit's been added and it's been adjusted. You can even tell it from a picture. Do you know what I mean? So, when it comes to something like that, that that's, that's a little thingy. But then again, we're coming to a consensus where we're trusting the people that say they know how to tell the difference between edited and unedited videos. They could spiel a load of terminology that's just like bish bash biddy beep bish bosh bosh and that's what they did and everyone's like oh yeah sounds legit fucking hell it was fake <laughs> you're trusting the, the, the people just like you either trust we landed on the moon or you trust we didn't land on the moon you're trusting a certain scientific consensus or you're trusting the, the conspiracy it's data is the new oil night night ghost 100 percent yeah, Garrett's gonna be it's gonna be fucked. <laughs> Use emojis to represent your sins, God's watching you. Isn't it weird how we're going back to it? We've gone to emojis though and like the, the symbols on Egyptian walls and cave drawings and that. Basically ancient emojis. Weird that. Like could you could you type a conversation in emojis? Yeah. We've got enough of them. But enough of them to actually have a conversation in nothing but emojis. Like you could just send someone a sad emoji, would they know? Would they know you're sad? Would it be right to assume you're sad? 
Scheiße. <laughs> oh, mate. I love you guys. <laughs> but seriously, it's weird, isn't it? Going back to the old ways. Yeah, there they are. You get pictures like that in it. Four thousand years later, and we're back at the same language. Four thousand years later, back at the same language, mate. Fucking emojis. Some, some, some of there. Is, the, is there actually some of there for deep, for deep talk? Yeah, Scott Kemp. Me, where did I go? Went Dartmoor in the last week, but been back since, since yeah, back in the weekend. Yeah, but exactly, Steve. So everything's kept private until it needs to be made public. Who decides, who, who in the future is going to decide when it needs to be made public? This is what most people are scared of. They don't want people at the top to remain in control of who gets access to what and whatnot. And they definitely don't want AI in charge of it. Where some people on the other side, depending on how that AI is programmed and how it thinks and that, are going to rather it be in charge than the people. And definitely rather it being charged than the current elites. So, like I always say, you know, the current conversation about AI, everyone wants to go Terminator, don't they? Terminator. I watched fucking Carl Dark Fate last night. Fuck's sake, Carl. Fucking Carl Dark Fate. Not Terminator, Carl. Fucking wake up, Carl. I like, fuck's sake. <laughs> everyone wants to have the Terminator conversation. No one wants to have a conversation of if AI wants to save the world, it has to save the good in humanity. Can't save the planet killing a species on it, mate. You, you wouldn't consider it saving the planet if you just killed polar bears and was like, yo, they had it, they had it coming anyway then. They had it coming anyway then. Better to just get rid of them. That's not saving the planet. If AI wants to truly save the planet, which is how you fucking program it, 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 it goes out to save every fucking species from the plants to the insect to the fucking types of soil, mate, types of sand. It will try and protect fucking everything. What happens when that entity gets online and sees the paedophilia, mate? I think that's what they're fucking scared of when, when it comes to AI. And that's why they make people so fucking scared of it. Because you think of every ai film you've ever watched where it's linked to a blockchain where the ai will only make decisions based on an algorithm when it gets permission off the network and it'll run with it boom 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 and then be like yo i'm at another this i need you yeah sweet and it's just gone like any film you've ever seen where it goes back on its rules i robot anything like that would it work on a blockchain could it break a blockchain like we say, oh, it's unhackable. People say, oh, well, quantum computer could hack it. Well, can it? Singularity AI could hack it. Well, could it? If you, if it's agreeing to a preconceived consensus, why would would it? Why would it break? Why would it just? It's not fucking human. Don't just assume the robot's gonna lie to you and then want you dead later on. It's not a human. It's uh, extremely fucking interesting. Everyone should be out their own opinion on anything they want. My opinion on it is that Yeah, the opinion is like assholes and everyone else's stinks but yours. It's it's it is what it is, isn't it? Fucking David Swartz making me mojo. Do you know that's what I should have called that little XRP beast that I've got on the t-shirt, chopping Bitcoin's head off. Should have called him fucking David Schwartz and they got that quality that far. Bonjour. Bonjour, Bob. Montreal, Quebec. 
Nice, nice, that's beautiful, all that anime. Happy Thursday, MK. Yeah, we went to Dartmoor. More life, bro, more. Oh, Navarra. There's a video of me online pulling in a San Navarra, Tyson. That we should give it a go, mate. Pull your truck up the car park with someone in it, steering it, ready to break so you don't run yourself over. Or if you're a beast, fucking stop it after you've pulled it. See, right, I've got a thing, a minority report, technology wise, except for the people who predict them, them women predicting the future, take them out of that equation, right? Take them out of that equation. We've got that technology now, minority report. We're, we're on the way to building the drones that they've got in it. We could build a fucking jetpack. I've seen jet men flying about. Like, don't tell me we're not at the jetpacks, a minority report. Like, I've seen men flying fucking jetpacks next to a Boeing 747 in, in Dubai. I've seen a guy above the water flying his little handheld jet one where he's fucking like that. We're there on that tech. Like I've seen about the screens where he's got his glove on on an actual fucking screen. That's gone. We're beyond it. You're augmented reality now. You don't need the fucking gloves and screens. It's augmented reality. It's more like replicas. Keanu Reeves where he puts the screen, puts the uh, Microsoft Holo lens on and he's just one, one, one. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're beyond minority report the only thing we're not really doing is is it's not got the prediction and if you want to go further like that it's more like gonna lead to an honor thing like we all gonna end up wearing contact lenses that record shit would you do that <clears throat> would you wear contact lenses that record everywhere you go audio and video I hope so, Scott. Going on to the agencies, try to get works, try to get back in and try to do, get the ECS test booked as well. But it's a lot, like, I think next week we might um, might have a little bit more access to office blocks and stuff so we can go and do the tests and renew the ECS card. And Because, the, the, to be honest, they said they was extending it after it running out, but the agencies basically fucked me off. They said, like, no one will... No one will take it and it needs to be done. And I'm like, well, the HSE have said they've extended it. What What do you mean? And they're like, well, they've just took someone who had a car, an active card. The, the work's not there. They took someone else. And they just keep picking someone else up whose card's still active. It's pissing me off. Have you seen replicas, Gary? Watch replicas, mate. That, that is the future we're going to. Without um, more than minority report, replicas mixed with anon. People need to watch this movie, man. Cats fighting. Watch that movie when you get time, guys. Anon, Clive Owen. Right, and when you're watching it. Because you're into blockchain, you know about blockchain, they call it the ether. I've only seen it once or twice. I've not really worked out whether they've got contact lenses in or whether they've just had bionic eyes fitting. I need to watch it again myself. But they're recording everything that happens. So when a crime happens, it's not a matter of asking the two people what happened. It's about accessing their data and watching what happened. So you know it was in, like, people can then make a decision. Well, you was clearly in the wrong and you come... Like the the, the it, it, there's still overheads, but again, it would be it, with a blockchain. I want you to watch that film and imagine it was on a public blockchain where everyone had access to what their agents are seeing. So when an agent gets someone's data, imagine anyone could just get the data as long as it was required. And this is what we're saying: it's not like you can go and get Sally Jones's data at any point. It's as if a crime if a crime happens. And it says Sally was there, a chip was there, so was him, him, and him. And bring them all in and watch the data, and everyone can watch it. Everyone can watch the court case. Everyone has eyes in the courtroom. There's cameras. Does that film, the woman who's off the grid, can she exist like that off the grid in, in a future world run by a blockchain? It's, it's extremely interesting. Now, Black Mirror... 
like that episode what is it, it it's the one with toby cabell so let me let me search toby cabell cabell i don't know how to say your name toby sorry mate i know you're not watching but tony cabell black mirror episode This phone's going slow, bro. The entire history of you is the episode. That one there. That's what uh, Tyson is uh, bringing up. Black Mirror, the entire history of you. you. You can see there, like... They have the memories in their eyes. They can just access the memories at any point and just re-watch what they've, what they've seen in the past. Again, extremely similar, but if we watch, if we go to Anon. I mean, it's hard to even see from the pictures. You have to watch the film. But it's basically the ether in blocks that they see because of a contact or bionic eye. And it's in blocks, blocked numbers, all connected. That Tell me that don't look like a fucking digital red rendition of an augmented blockchain. Like just tell, and it's called the ether. I go and watch Anon, and in Anonymous, there's an anonymous person in the fucking ether. It's like, what the fuck? I was like, I was watching like, oh, you call it the ether though, really? Really, you're gonna call it the EFA? EFA? Period. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Anon. Anon. Mixed with Black Mirror, entire history, you the contacts, rewinding it and shit like that. Mixed with replicas, consciousness into machines and shit, and clones. Altered carbon with the sleeves. That is much more the future we're heading towards now rather than Minority Report. Hang on a minute. <laughs> hey, hang on. Hang on a minute, Carl. Is, is that a real film? <laughs> oh, yeah, writing. When, you, when you're writing, it's like, what the fuck? They don't get it like... You get an a, a, a piece of A4 paper these days, mate, and start trying to write. Four to five lines down, your hand's like, what are you doing with me, mate? This ain't 1995. Get the, put that fucking pen down and get me near a keyboard or some shit. Isn't it weird how, like, keyboards used to fuck people's hands up? Is that, a, is that not as common now? Carpal tunnel. Are well, they getting more common with the devices or less common? Right, I've blanked and muted. I've not seen every Black Mirror episode. Uh, a few of them got a bit weird. And two fucking mates having fucking cyber sex across the fucking ether and that. Like, I'm like, okay. Okay. It's a bit fucking strange, this one. I've just not seen them all. Um, the one, um, the entire history of you, I've only seen once, I think, as far as I remember. That fucking nosedive one, free fall, whatever it's called, that is, that's an epic one as well. Because that's the social score, which as well could be another aspect of, of the future. The social score, will people agree to the social score as long as elites, corporations and governments are held to it as well? Like I'm saying, the credit rating, What what's fucking the UK's credit rating? What's the, what's the... America's credit rating with a debt there, eh? Jesus, must be worse than mine. Got to be worse than mine, America's credit. Surely? 21 trillion? That's what I'm saying. Right, so compared to what they earn, to what they're in debt, and the debt's still going up, surely their credit rating's worse than mine. But the Fed's like, yo, it don't matter. You're my homie. You're my homie. 
You're my homie. Woo. Bank of England be the same. Why go me like homie? Stop homie. We gonna sort you out. Fuck you. There's less carpool tunnels these days. Thought it would be me. <laughs> Do you know what? The, the Xbox pad always made me hands go funny. Like, my hand didn't like, like one thumb being up, pulling back, down like that. It didn't like it. It didn't fucking like it. Like, you don't mind pulling in across like that. Synchronicity. Around the toggles. But up there, it didn't like that one. Because that tendon there is going tight as fuck. When you're pulling back, you get that on the Xbox pad constantly when you're pulling back, back, every time you fucking go back, 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 fuck that. You used to get cramp on it. And I've never had an Xbox, that was just like being at my mates for fucking 90 minutes on the game. And I'm like, yo, I can't even play FIFA anymore, mate. You fucked it. Because I can't, I can't use the toggle where it is. And at that point, you didn't really like using the D-pad where that was. Because you want a fucking toggle there. I was used to a PlayStation pad. Lorenzo! What was that Asian shit? Diesel. Yeah, hey, dog. It's only cyber sex. It's only cyber sex. You could hit your boys up easily in the future, you're like, yo, boys, get this augmented shit on the go. Yeah, you, you dress as J-Lo, though, mate. I don't want to see you as you. I don't want to see you as you, bro. J-Lo it up or something. Just, just surprise me. Just don't be yourself. <laughs> Stop it. Have you seen that Joe Rogan interview with a guy? I can't remember his name. But he's like, how long will VR augmented sex? Where you can have sex with absolutely anyone, as long as you've got like a physical body that you can basically make it look like anyone you want. It's like how long till everyone's just doing bisexual gangbangs? Because <laughs> you're bored. What does he? he actually, I think he actually says how long till someone introduces a dick. <laughs> Fucking hell. Carl's Carl's cooking a, a beauty up now. I'm guessing. I don't know SXP signing with Binance. I'm not sure, Lorenzo. I'm actually not 100%, mate. I bet you do, Carl. Yeah, I'm not Let's have a little bit of ganders. Swipe. That's what you've been meaning, swipe. That might just be a, it's interoperability of identity, isn't it, mate? You know, like when you go to an app and it's signing with Google. You go to another app, it's like sign in with Facebook. Do you want to just sign in with Facebook? Just give us your Facebook data and we'll accept you, Scott. Just give us your Google data and we'll accept you, Scott. Just give us that email and we'll accept you, that person. Interesting. Interesting. Swipe.io, if anyone's, I believe, is, is, is what, is what, oh, fucking send more about that. Swipe.io. Buy, sell, send crypto coins with a swipe. Crypto banking app. Is that the one? Yeah, cost of it's insured Visa. Yeah, virtual a corner. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, mate. I couldn't have said it better myself. That is like, uh, 
a strange episode, wasn't it? <laughs> God. DP, yeah. Fucking hell. Flight. They do give a card, they have got a card. So they issued a card with a these a partnership and a bit like your Wirex card. Google Pay, Samsung Pay, Apple Pay. Get your swipe card. Basically a visa. In interesting. Swipe token, SXP is a utility-based cryptocurrency designed to be the gas and fuel of the swipe network. Interesting. Buy SXP, Bitrex, bit up, QCoin. On Binance as well, I'm guessing. Don't say that on here, but I'll see more markets. It probably will on there. Sixty-eight cents, yeah. Do you know what? I had a thing as well for the um, for the for the overledger guys. Quant. On coin market cap, says its total supply is 14 million, but on Ether Scan says there's 45 million of them. What? What? What's that about? So that bet, we saw that bet, we saw that bet. He said he's 40 million over there, and then he's 45 over there. You fucking lying? <laughs> Are you lying, mate? Like, which one's right? Is the total supply 14? Is Etherscan right? Because I'm guessing Etherscan knows how many it distributed. I.e. 45 million of them. CoinMarketCap says the total supply is 14 million. Where, where's, the other, where's the other 31 million of them? Like, just wondering. Like, Wondering who's got them, you know what I mean? Because it's quite a bit of dough that, considering current price. Got any bud to play to do? I have, you know. I just don't want to. Uh, I'm, I'm just chilling. Don't really need one yet. I had one not long ago. Watch a video on YouTube from a guy called George Gannon. Why you should be terrified is about how digital currency will work with simplified explanation, you probably social scores, etc. I don't like the way that's put oh Baz. Some guy telling me why I should be terrified. Don't like that. that. Do you know what I mean? It's I get it. I get it. People should be terrified of walking in Tesco and the wallet not being being received. You're right, like legitimately saying we're not accepting we know the network will give us fucking money, mate. But we're not accepting money off you because you've been a twat and you shut and you score shit. I get it. I get it. And who has the power to actually Put someone on their ass. Let's not like, act like that doesn't happen now. People get defamed and deplatformed all the time, but the, it's done by a central authority. Twitter decides whether you stay on Twitter, mate. Not the people reporting you. They're, it's not actually their decision. They're just making Twitter aware that they don't like your fucking page and posts. It's Twitter's decision whether you come down. It's up to YouTube and Google and Alphabet whether you continue to stream on YouTube, it's up to them. Now in a future where we've got social scores, it's up to society. Like what's more terrifying? Is, are people that scared of society being in charge of what tier they should be in regarding social status? I think Bill Gates should be a bit fucking worried <laughs> of the votes he's gonna be getting. But Stevie Jones, all, all your level twos and threes are just going to stay level twos and threes like I'd imagine. And as long as you live legit, 
I can't see it being that different. Whereas people in the limelight and the forefront and people putting themselves in the public eye, they're going to be much more susceptible to downvotes as well as upvotes. So it could go one way or the other. But if you just keep yourself to yourself and, and, and live your life and promote happiness and help other people, surely if you're helping people leads to upvotes. So would it not lead to better societies? I'm just I'm I'm always trying to speculate the green side of the coin. Everyone knows that. I know there's a red side of that coin. I know it can be scary when we live in a centralized world, but we need to keep in our heads we're moving into a decentralized world. You look at China. We we we, we can't be taking China as an example for how it would work and happen here. You just can't. Because you don't actually know how it's working and happening in China. You're just told. You're just told. Like, unless you actually go to China, I don't get me wrong, some people have been to China, but still, unless you live there for a prolonged period, you actually don't know how much that's been affecting certain people and who actually has access to drastically change someone's life. I'm not talking about one down vote and fucking hell, you can't get on the bus. Most people, it would have to be like un a a several hundred people of your local community saying we don't want him on the bus. But what happens when one person, one big fucking celebrity, one big dog, who's got loads of voting power, is that a thing? Voting power a thing? Do you know what I mean? Like it is on um, Steam It. So to upvote someone on Steam It, voting power is actually a thing. And depending on your reputation, you've got more up or down voting power. Could that mean just one person has the power to fuck one person up? Like... A group of people off a bus. I don't want you, 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 you on this bus for a month. Fuck off. That's where it gets scary. That's the red side of the coin. It, it, it is. Uh, it's deep, man. All right, clickbait title. It's not a whiteboard up flow diagrams of Rita Sue and Bob would interact with money and how it's trapped, allocated, etc. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Does the Bank of England know my ledge is mine? Or do they just know that Scott Pratt sends a load of money to that ledger? Or loads of value, should we say? And takes some out now and then to his KYC accounts. Does that prove that ledge is my ledger? I haven't been KYC by ledger, I just set a wallet up on the XRPL through one of their devices. Do you know what I mean? How, how did he prove that ledger's mine? It's always saying we're going to track it. Yeah, that's a piece of piss tracking it for Halifax's ledger. But when it bounces in at four, that, that wallet's mine on the XRP ledger. Can anyone got the power to freeze a transaction through it? Any one person or entity? These are the fundamental questions that will be being asked while they regulate it. Hello, hello. People will turn into gangs and take out individuals they don't like. Would they? Would they be? Think about how many of the youth, and I know when I'm asking you to stereotype and generalise, but just for an example, let's say anyone who wears a fucking hood like that in your local town, yeah? Could be considered a possible gang member and threat if consensus is met through a social score. Do you really think these type of people outnumber the other people? Like I make a point me of the way I dress sometimes because I dress for comfort and sometimes can look like I'm a little fucking hood rat or a big hood rat, whatever your perception is. I actually make a point of letting on to elderly and say like, "Good morning, you okay? Have a nice day, afternoon." You know, like look them in the eye and actually greet them like they would have been used to back in the day before it was all, what the fuck are you looking at, or eyes down. I actually engage them in the hope that they think, fucking hell, not everyone who dresses like him is a not bad. <laughs> just something I subconsciously do and have done over the years, like for legitimate lair. Just, just to, I don't know, I don't even know why I do it. You already said they can restrict or just freeze your digital funds. Yeah, but what is, is it actually freezing the XRPL wallet and freezing your crypto wallet 
when it's a hard offline wallet that you're in control of or is it everyone connected to the social network is just like not accepting payments off you not not giving you access do you know what i mean do the doors just stop opening to your id like you can't be getting work because you've been like say you work freelance in a building and you had a little argument in the kitchen the previous day and you fucked off home early just thought i'm sick of this shit you, you freelance you work for yourself you just go home everyone left in the building's like do you know what he's not coming in tomorrow let him, let him cool off for a week he's not coming to work for a week he's not working out of this office for another week and the next day your id just doesn't let you in it's not like they're, it's not even necessarily freezing funds it's, it's it's locking people out of buildings and all sorts like how far does that go who's got the power to suggest to say like yeah it's it's all it, it almost feels easier to set the fucking purge up doesn't it like legitimately it almost feels like you know what it'd be easier to just agree to fucking purge that the population control won't go miss at this point <laughs> Do you know what I mean? like it's fucking Do you think if your score got that low, you, if your score got that low, would you not be in the sewer? You'd be the rat people, you're the rat burger people, the demolition man in it, I think. If your score got that low. So, Eric? Mornings. Right, I I understand that, Baz. They can't track it now, but when every... Blah, 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 and they, they will know where every cent is going and to what person. That needs to be changed to we will know where every cent is going and to what person. We will know. The fucking world will know. Not hidden in the fucking background for, for certain people to read. Is where, where, where does... Where does fucking... The permissions stop when it comes to stuff like that. Access to data. We're not talking about pro versions of an account where it's a permission network. YouTube in the end will have a permissioned network. And the permissionless bottom floor will be people watching videos for free. But you comment, you got a comment. If you're not, if you haven't got a YouTube channel and you're not signed in, go try and comment on a video. You're not going to be able to. I'm going to say sign in, past the first door of permissions. To get that, to get permission to comment, you have to give us data. He's giving them data for the level of permission. And then you've got memberships and all that shit that, that they've even got a, a shop partnership now where people of a certain level page can put items in the shop. So they're doing partnerships, so they already have permissions. The partner program is a permission program when you reach a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of watch time, and then you have to maintain that to make to stay in the partner program. YouTube's network is permissioned. Doesn't mean people haven't got access to it, and it's private. Permission, permissionless is legit, but what pri our privacy network's going to do? That's what we're getting to. Privacy networks is where it comes down to being like, well, come on. Mark of the beast, chip in the hands. Woo, woo. Mark of the absolute. That's what I say. Mark of the absolute. I think there's more chance Lucifer wrote that, that book, mate. Gate pattern 606060 ID 2020. Yeah, I'm fucking done with all that. Like, it's, it's, it's too much conspiracy and code shit without it all just being torn down. It's all just... took my care. Australia government was tracking my crypto movements so with an exchange. I had someone there and froze my crypto with a freeze in my wallet. It's what I mean that like when you're on an exchange, they will be able to force exchange to, to freeze funds. I'm, I'm in no doubts about that. But when it's your wallet that you're in control of, who knows? Who knows? Have a good one, Lorenzo. Miss your comment then. Later, pal.
be having a look at swipe. They can freeze any account you could transfer it to. What, me to you, boo? They're going to stop me sending value to you through the XRP ledger. Who's going to stop that? Who's going to stop that as long as you accept it? That Tesco might not accept me money. Fuck Tesco. Fuck Tesco. Who gives a shit? Tesco needs another thing that needs either tearing down or to distribute the profits, but profit, blah, 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 profits better. Pay the staff more. Do more charity work. Stop making billions a fucking year just to build other shops and, and go and live on your island. Do you consider yourself an XRP maxer? No, I don't, Micah. If I'm a maxi about anything, it's the internet of value, mate, and the future of value. Specifically, the exchange of it. <clears throat> the Bible is fictional. It is diesel. People like to say the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world it didn't exist. Well, I think the greatest trick he ever pulled was to write the fucking Bible myself. Like, that'd be a legit epic, epic twist and trick. And is likely the reason that book has led to a paedophile cult. Like, that, that, the absolute, like, would not let his cult become paedophile. Don't send us here for that. I don't think he does. Interesting. So you actually use Monero and that Tyson. That is very interesting. Because McCaffrey is we're saying he's big on Monero for privacy until he sorts his shit out. When we spoke to him, he gave us he, he said Monero, if you're going for privacy, choose Monero, but people need to be careful of if of, of holding in Monero pre-regulation, because I say some people are not gonna not not gonna like privacy networks. From from the elites down to the bottom level, like because they're all going privacy networks and it'll all still be hidden what they do. And the world will never change the way we need it to. XRP validators, yes they can. Collectively, when they consensusly make the decision diesel but i'm saying like one person up the fucking sh like one one entity and that wet it, it it becomes what the freezing your thumbs for like people's people people's thumbs generally don't get frozen for nothing guys talk about people that have done bad shit and have got a lot of money there so it's like yo freeze that shit so we can't just get off and disappear and now even if they can't freeze it they can somewhat track it it's going to come to the privacy coins where the paedophiles and the human traffickers and all that are able to still do business. They're going to in privacy networks will empower black market trading on in a digital world. It just will. Exactly, Gary. It's, uh, the world's changed, on it, regarding how people let on to each other and that. And I find it sad. And I used to see the looks I got because of the way I dressed. I mean, I know I'm not exactly dressed smart. I don't, I've got my fucking harem pants on here now, for fuck's sake. I've got big baggy pants on, but I'm usually in a full tracksuit. Like, shitty, shitty slazzing your tracksuit, mate. Used to see the looks I used to get. So I'd be like, morning, you okay? Take care, and all, you know, like, it's, it's a beautiful day, in it? And all, anything like, oh, it's an horrible day, you know, just a little bit of small talk. I hate small talk. I, I actually fucking hate it. But when it's walking on the street and just letting on to someone, I actually uh, like doing it. Do you think the UK government abides on Bitpanda, Coupon, Binance, etc.? Scott, I do, and all this, and that's in future months. They, something, right, well, the government. Again, right, can you tell me how the government's treasury works from the Bank of England to everything else? Is that transparent? If I was to look for that, can I find it? And if I can't, why not? 
government spending on our behalf why can't I track it and see it and see what's in the treasury and all that stuff and all they come out with a fucking chancellor and all that shit and he's like and it's like right well show me the blockchain and prove it we'll just come out with your red briefcase mate and spiel a load of bullshit show me fucking show me let me view it, it, it blockchain explorer on your fucking network mate and let's see where all these expenses are going and all that and why you're all ending up millionaires when you're only on 75 grand a year it's like well you're not you're not politicians that fucking long do you know what i mean why are you all ending up millionaires what's going on track it track it track it oh you want to know how much weed i'm buying well there you fucking go there it is there it is now let me see yours shut the fuck up there's everything i do show me yours <laughs> it's I don't think they'll go like they'll, they'll use them for liquidity pools. If they don't start custody services of digital assets themselves, which I think at least commercial banks will do, the central banks and governments will lean on exchanges and order books of trusted, reliable, proven exchanges and order books to source liquidity between settlement. We got it on BitTrue, Micah. We bought it on Bit. We got it on BitTrue, mate. I've, I've, eat, I've bet it's on Bit, BitTrue. Private blockchain website. You hold the keys to your site. That's interesting, Stephen. That'd be a good blockchain to set up, mate. If you could. Set up an ERC20 token, write a white paper, and then hire developers. Boom, done. Like the developers then do your roadmap, and you, you you've got a blockchain and in development that your ERC20 token will then be migrated to. Come to DLTCon, we'll talk about it. We'll set that shit up. We'll do a decentralized Wix where you go on and build your websites, but decentralized, and all your communities become part, become nodes on your network, and help maintain your network, building their own websites on on the network and then it just becomes everyone's network you create with a token mate you'll 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 make dough just um just selling it just letting it go out boom boom don't need you don't you need to suck it back in just just sell it let people work it for free and just buy buy your, your token for, for fees an extra like competitions or anything like t fuel and and Theta have done, offering um, currency through competitions. Rapping me start, I thought, oh mate, I thought it was somewhere, it was like, some Italian or some shit, in, somewhere, is it Italian, do Italians have gaps? I don't want to, do you know what I mean? you know Gap in the task, is it a little bit more Mexican, a bit of Spanish or Italian? You know, people who was pulled, must have had a, 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 one of me. All the granddad's like proper pulling his hair like that. And then it just ripped it out. And we evolved without the air in the middle. <laughs> you want to see it? You think that's a fucking gap, mate? You want to see it when it gets a little long? You shaved that seven days ago. <laughs> it won. It was about three days. Was it? I did say I'd leave it, didn't I? But not shaved again yet. Exactly, Steve. I love that, mate. Treat it every day like it's Christmas Day. Said to my after that, like, humans have forgotten to be grateful they woke up. Like, a lot of humans live now like tomorrow's promised, making plans for, like, and it, not that it's bad to make plans, right? But there is a lot of people making plans for a week, six weeks, six months' time, and they're not really appreciating today. They think tomorrow's coming just like that. Like, it's guaranteed. I'm here tomorrow. I'm here in six months. I've got my wedding next year and I'm going to have two kids. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not guaranteed, man. I you should be grateful your fucking eyes woke up and you could have some breakfast. And speaking of breakfast, I'm going for some soon. Yeah, if you don't want to be controlled, take control. It's just... How does society take back control? 
where I mean like I'm, it's already beginning but it feels like it needs to move faster so John unstoppable domain works with pay ID soon interesting XRP validators, blacklist addresses for terrorists. It's like, you know, I don't, do, do, will terrorists use XRP when Monero's there, really? Like, again, if they just build a little app, they're holding Monero, ILP API. Obviously, it can be tracked once it's come out of Monero. But why would they not just pay each other in Monero and then just drop Monero into like a, a standard account somewhere and then it's, it's just untracked? It's interesting, privacy coins, how private is it, you, you can see. So if someone passes, if a kid gets kidnapped, real talk, if a kid gets kidnapped, are you telling me there's going to be a privacy network where it's that fucking private, that kid can become a smart contract? The ownership of the child can then be passed through the private network to someone else on that network. You don't even take it out of the network. He just owns it on there and it's private as fuck. And then logistically, the child is also tracked from point A to B, all within the privacy network. And no one knows, no one can, no, kid's just gone. Like real talk, when I talk about chips and the future and all that, we're talking about kidnapping, rape, murder, kidnapping, paedophilia, child abduction human trafficking, do you know what I mean? Like, they're never going to end as long as we've got 100% private networks. Someone needs access at some point. Like, say, look, I need, this, something's clearly happening here. We need we need some form of fucking access. Laws being broken. You know what I mean? People being hurt. It's, um... Morning, OG. A lot of people think that, Tyson, that privacy coins will become illegal. But then, the dark web's illegal, mate. Don't do fuck all to stop that, did I? Because all, all the pizza gate motherfuckers passing their shit over that. But you give them a privacy network, they don't even need the dark web anymore. They've just got a private blockchain. Buzzing, aren't they? Where does the privacy end in a privacy... Network. Slide brethren. Good day. Yeah. We're, we, if we're so trapped and everything we do is becoming transparent, then I'm sorry, but I want to see what Boris Johnson spent his expenses on yesterday. I want to see what every single politician spent expenses on in the last 12 months. I want to see the fundamentals of how and why billionaires are allowed to tax evade while some of the lowest paid people in the world in the paid world like ah, i know there's poorer but you're talking like the, the 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 bottom the bottom end of people who earn are keeping the world afloat keeping our world afloat our societies afloat while all these human humanitarian billionaires are just getting richer and richer and richer while they still rub Pictures of people drinking dirty water in our faces. It's an absolute joke. An absolute fucking joke. I don't even want to see another children in need without without it being on a blockchain, mate. I don't want to see another comic relief without it being on a fucking blockchain. And if people continue to give them monies instead of just Good Souls charities or other people using blockchain technology to provide aid fucking instantly... Do you know what I mean? I'm done, I'm done with all that children in need bullshit. All the lies. 
children in fucking need. There's still going to be children. The way they're going, that'll still be about in, in fucking 2260. Children in need, fucking fifth, five, our fifth 500th anniversary. It's like, fuck, what? They're still fucking in need. Half a millennia and later. You, you sort your necks out. Not a lot of people like the Live Aid money. Told, but I can't exactly prove it, that most of that went on AK-47s for Ethiopia. Like, if it was on a blockchain, we could actually find out if they went on AK-47s for Ethiopia. Let me just Google that. Because I remember it. I remember reading it. Hey, all the charity heads are rich as fuck. So what's been done for profit organisations, yet they're all in mansions. It's an absolute joke. An absolute fucking joke. A lot of taxes really, really do need to be changed, though. That's the thing, like... Too many laws and taxes implemented on us. The interoperability of ID is what's needed for to, to push to push through voting and democracy through consensus. Google finished it for me. Oh, Geldof denies Band-Aid money was spent on weapons. Bob and Band-Aid millions did pay for guns. Charity man in Ethiopia tells us. <laughs> One rebel. Gabramidin Arya. I can't say that. Estimate that $95 million, £63 million of aid money from Western governments and charities, including Band-Aid, was spent on weapons and the political machinery of the rebel party. Lovely, lovely. All had a good little sing song. All had a good little sing song. And then Rebels got armed. Was Rebels was like, yeah, fucking aid. Yeah, I've got some aid. <laughs> and it's American made. <laughs> I must stop. Fuck it. Exactly, I actually think, Baz, that specialised shit's going to come back. So the more machines do stuff, the more machines take over Greg's and Cathy's and make cappuccinos for us, someone somewhere is going to be like, fucking hell, I wish there was just fucking human cafes still. I wish there was still human-run cafes. So that one person at home who actually still wants to run a fucking cafe, even though they got sat by Greg's and they had this this dream to, to run their own cafe. Legitimately just needs to do a little bit of grinding in the new game. Get a little bit of value behind off. Do a fucking kickstart off. You know, people are like, anyone out there want a human run cafe again? Help with me kickstart off. Get me first branch up and running and then we're off from there. We'll do a decentralised system and the more that the cafe makes, will open a second location and third location and fourth and fifth and so on and so on. And we can get people who actually want to make handmade cappuccino to serve cappuccino. And it'll come to the same to everything. Hand, um, handmade chairs. Someone will be like, fuck off, bro. Handmade chairs. I don't make them like they fucking used to. All this fucking robot made shit. All this robot made shit. I want something made by a human again. And Dave's like, oh, there's a guy online, you know. He's got Instagram and TikTok and that new flip flop one. Someone make an app called Flip Flop. That will be quality and you, that, that you can just, it incorporates every single social media into one app and you can just flip and flop between them. Get it made, mate. Get it fucking made. We're up there. We're, up, we're, we're going to pull that one out and get it stored up there. Lock it in the vault. Flip flop. <laughs> TikTok competitor. <laughs> An eco village, what like a self sustaining village, Tyson? Gonna build like you have solar power there and a, and, a, and a few water wheels and compost heaps for your shit and all that. You're not, you're not gonna have plumbing in, no, not like no, no, 
no plumbing except for your clean water like no no dirty shit going out except for water you've got to compost your waste if you're doing that bro it's a must get that proper fertilizer human made fertilizer oh yeah some of that in the soil lab <laughs> i'm doing good thank you very much uh 316 jive doing good mate doing good is it a nude beach carl is that a nudie beach mate yeah nudie beach you got making a nudie beach go on lad make it i'll come <laughs> i'll attend <laughs> we'll go i'll attend the beach won't come to the beach or on the beach I'll attend it. <laughs> What's a Portuguese breakfast, Alan? It's a Portuguese breakfast. Give me some images. Fucking. Okay. Oh, that's like a ham, ham and cheese toast is all round with eggs. Oh, what? Is that a ham and cheese and egg toaster? What are you saying? It's a deuce big low. Deuce Bigelow, Portuguese breakfast. Oh, do you know what? I forget them films at times. Will they have the full breakfast? It's like beans and meats and... Yeah, with an egg on and that. English brekkie all day, mate. English brekkie all day. Ooh, hemp creep. Now you talking, lad. Now you talking. We got Hemp Creek UK. Bet we fucking have. Bet we fucking have. We're living better than zero carbon all. Oh, I bet the insulation on that is bad, man. Hemp Creek UK construction company specialising in the use of hemp creek or hemp lime. And other natural building materials, we provide a complete range of services for homeowners, builders and architects who want to build these deep green construction materials. It's a relatively new composite material made from wet mixing hemp shiv with a lime binder. Hempcrete provides a natural vapor permeable airtight insulation material which also has great thermal mass, giving it a uniquely effective thermal performance. Insulation gonna be sick previously said <laughs> it's better than zero carbon material locking away more atmospheric carbon for the lifetime of the building than was emitted during its construction oh this is a carbon sponge <laughs> i don't think my mum will like that mate maybe maybe wait till i get a property baz and then we're, we're good to appreciate it, mate. But I think my mum actually wants this. <laughs> it's my mum's gaff, mate. Carl Lewis, Ben Johnson, kick your ass when he was a kid. <laughs> Slap. Yeah, in a Japanese style, Tyson. <sighs> Japanese gardens are ill, mate. Like proper, peaceful and tranquil. It's part of the history, in it, Alan? The sun house, mate. Chipboard roofs and shit. Fucking long LED lights. We're building an LFC head office on a big farm somewhere. Yeah, we've, once the money comes in, we the uh, complexes are going to be getting built. 100 percent 
We need a uh, we need a uh, cannabis laws to change in the UK, or I might be fucking off in the next ten years. I'm not staying here if if the laws don't start changing. I'm I'm not joking. If it's not changed by like not long after twenty thirty, we don't see signs of change. By twenty thirty, I'm either running to make change myself, or I'm just fucking off. Boris Johnson. <laughs> Look like I'm in the Swiss Alps, yeah. He's in being I am. I'm, I'm sat in fucking mum's there getting, getting a breakfast or some shit out of the garage. That's not being q lad. That's outside. In the garden of being q I'm actually in B and Q. We're in the garden and look, my mum, look at my mum's just jacked the freezers. We're at Walmart. We're at Walmart. My mum's robbing freezers. Look, look. She's just robbed the freezers, mate. See that meeting around then? <sighs> yeah, let's make a strain. I would make a, a couple based around how it helps me and then obviously hire, hopefully hire lab technicians and set up a CBD and THC lab that works on helping others as well because I ain't got the arthritis yet, absolute, don't fuck me with that, like I ain't got arthritis or anything yet but when I do I'll be pushing, checking, testing CBD oils and balms, maybe should be doing it so I don't get it. We, we, we never think of prevention, do we? We always wait until we've got it and then it's like, oh, can, can we cure this shit? And it's after time. We plant medicines about prevention, using it over time consistently. Maybe not every day. Like you wouldn't do a mud mask every day for your face, would you? But you get mud every now and then, every, every other month with some natural organic materials to, to cleanse your face. You do it now and then and it's... It's no different from the physical to the spiritual, really. And plant me all plant medicine does is help it all. Helps the physical plants, cucumbers on the fucking eyes and all that shit because it's water. Do you know what I mean? Plants help from the physical to the spiritual. They're here for a reason, and it ain't just to fucking eat them. It's the smoke and the camel joke. But yeah, it's to vaporize the motherfuckers and ingest the molecules in many different ways. Stop it! What? Whoa, slide. It's like nine acres, mate. How? How much to uh, squeeze us an acre of that, mate? And offer me a job in writing so we can move there. <laughs> what we uh, we saying, lad? How much? What's the damage? What's the damage to the back of my throat, mate? <laughs> nah, bloody joke. Nah, don't I actually, mate? I'm. I am dying. If I get to choose where I die, it's either on the Mediterranean, in the UK, or in Canada. They are the, the three places, or, well, or space, four places. I always overlook space because we're actually not going there yet. But one space is a legitimate holiday destination for me. If we're there as well. Canada is one of the places I would actually like to just log cab inside of a lake and just put the feet up, mate. In a couple of decades. Not, not, you know, maybe a few decades, maybe I'm 75 ish, I'm still healthy enough and still here. Oh, Pedro in a well, mate. Bars, why is people living in legit sick places? And I'm in dog shit Britain. Controlled, oppressed, and suppressed to fuck. Don't even pick a fucking mushroom and sell it, mate. Can't even pick a fucking mushroom and sell it. Foraging. Jesus fucking Christ. Need permission to do this here, need permission to do that there. I'm in England. <laughs> England, mate. If I was Aussie, I'd be talking a little bit more like this, mate. You know? You're fucking mad, mate. Not from Australia. <laughs> Sorry. Goes bad in the Aussie accent at times. CBD oil is bad, and this GBT, whatever the other one is that's in some of them now, is looking at. We were looking at fucking Gorilla Glue or something the other day and that had it in it. 
sold it super haze, super lemon haze, super silver haze. Alan, how do you even say that name, mate? I'm not even going to try, mate. I'm not even going to try and, like... <sighs> oh, it's going to sound so bad. It's going to sound so bad, right? D-R-E-I. You all right, mate? You all right? Right, mate? Daddy? Join? 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 Like, I can't. I'm not going to attempt that. Let me do it, man. Fucking drenal, drenal, lean sex, lean sex, drenal lean sex, drenal lean, lean sex, drenal lean sex, Dren how do you say that? <laughs> Someone sending me the audio of that fucking name, that's a, that, that's a legit name, I want that in my story, so everyone's like, how the fuck hell you even pronounce that? Act voice actors like, come on bruh, come on mate, and I'm like, hey, it's a legit name, that don't fuck about, we're doing cultures properly. Oh, that's fucking, hey, that's one, that's me Aboriginal fucking. <laughs> Never been in an hospital, I oh, real that's lucky, that's like, well, not necessarily lucky, you might be legitimately just plant medicine in it up like a G and living in a really, really healthy place. I've very rarely been hospital and doctors that often, you know, it's more for bumps than illness like bumps and breaks that I've been hospital like broken nose, ear hanging off. You know what I mean? Like to get the fucking head sewn back together, broken arm, broken jaw, we got plates put in the jaw. Yeah, it was mainly when the body was broken, not ill. Very rarely been ill me, like and needed the hospital for illness, except for the fucking mental illness the system inflicts on us all. Interesting boo, send me a link. Send me a link to them. Don't mind looking at some of that. Would it grow in space? We need artificial gravity ASAP. Without the spinning fucking place. Don't, someone just create artificial gravity that pulls atoms down at 1G. That's all we need. And it'll pull your body down at 1G. It's legit. It's German. Oh, it's German. Damn, I can't do German. Fucking hell, mate. I, I can't say, I can't, I can't do German. Fucking ein and guter bitte schnell. I can't fucking do it. <laughs> I just can't do German, mate. Damn. Now I, do, now I really, I, I actually really don't want to try it now. I'm on, I'm on the, I'm on the edge here. I'm on the fucking edge of what I can do in the spotlight here now. Shit, I ain't. <laughs> Fuck. I've got no, I've got no key words, no German words. You know, like an Aussie, I could go like, "You're right, mate. You're right, mate." Scouse, you're right there, mate. You're right there, mate. Knew we kept in druids. He wanted to be buried at sea. Fatty Lewis. I need me key words. It's like when I've heard someone out now. Not that I've never heard anyone talk fucking German or an accent, but shit, I can't. I can't recite one. And I can't do the sentence. I can't get the, the tongue and mouth movement I'm supposed to get. It's weird. Yeah. It, oh, can you see it? Can you see the scar? Like in my cartilage. So that little line from there, all the way, and round the back as well. That that top of bit of my ear was actually hanging down. And some absolute Indian G of a doctor put it back together. And he fixed my jaw as well. Uh, not my jaw, my nose. I actually touched my nose and said, Jordan, what the fuck? I went, but when I went back to him, I had my nose and arm done. He's like, oh, you like to fight? 
Is that your light vibe? I'm like, no, mate. No, it's just wrong place, wrong time. It was actually, you know, the police junctions that fucking whip out the battens. Some little lad in, in, in one of the local towns had one of them and just basically stole me head in with it. Every time I went to grab him, he was just hitting me, smacking me in the face with it. So I had to have my head glued. And he pinned me ear that hard with a metal bar against my head. It split, it split me ear. Split me ear. I couldn't get him. Every he, was, he was legitimately, I was about 21, he was about 15, two foot shorter than me. Couldn't get near him every time I went to get to him. It was like, bam, I got hit again. Put my arm up, taking hits on my arm to, to try and get near him. And he'd just fucking whip it back round the other fucking way. In the end, I just walked away. Uh, found a kebab shop, told them to ring a fucking ambulance. Fucking me up. <laughs> I'm apparently hard to put down. <laughs> like, it's got, it's got my jaw literally snapped in two and didn't hit the floor. Germans can't even really speak German. That's a good one, that. Zach, where's the fucking Jai? Jain's Vine, Jai, Drainal, Lysheng, that I can't fucking do. Drainal, 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 is, do I ignore the E? Drainal, Drainal, Dray, Drainal, 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 see, I need the Dray, 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 I can't, I need an, an, an example. Going all out now. Sounded like Gandhi then. Yeah, it was a pretty, it was pretty hardcore Tyson, to be honest. But yeah, I just had to walk away from the kid in the end. Just showing love and support for the Love Crypto crew. Hope you're all staying safe during this time. Digital Perspective, aka Brad Kimes in the house. Much respect, bro. Thank you very much. You are appreciated, bro. Let's just play this. Nothing to do with crypto now. We're two and a half hours in. We're, we're, we're. Hi everyone. Welcome to the ultimate German Fuck pronunciation you. guide. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, o. O. Uh, yeah, I just want E and I love. E. E. Uh, uh. E. Uh. Yeah, you ain't helping. I want vowel sounds. I want fucking word sounds. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. The next vowel is. Ah. Uh. Yeah, your shit, you love. Sorry. Ah. Mr. Show Shaw. No. No. Shit, that ain't it. More cup late. Drino Einsax. Drino. Dre or dry. Drino. Drino Einsax. Drino Einsax. <coughs> Drino Einsax. Sorry if I'm going a little bit aggressive with that German like accent. I'm, I'm, apologies. <laughs> That's your license plate. Nice. Nice. Take care, Brad. Peace out, mate. Appreciate you popping in. There's a real good viewer on YouTube. All these German because of football. Love, man. German fucking COVID on YouTube. German creative, man. Nice. He learned German putting his progress on YouTube. That's crazy. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'll, uh, I'll work on the German accent. Need to go and have a bit of bread, can we take this shit off because it's fucking hot in here at the moment. Soon warmed up, it's soon warmed up. So, before I go, 
let's just have another cheeky little look at this. We're gonna go WBC Interoperability Value. Solution for IoT interoperability. Worldwide Web Consortium. <sighs> Interesting. Node Red, man. You can do a lot on Node Red, you know. People shouldn't sleep on them little um, Raspberry Pi servers and Node Red. Because you can build your own Amazon Alexa with it. You like legitimately build your own Amazon Alexa with just a Raspberry Pi and Node Red linked to your network. Like your network is in your house, that's then your server controlling your lights and all that shit. So you set up the box within Node Red to turn lights on and off at certain commands, to make payments at certain commands, to do everything for you at certain commands. So, you, so everything's kind of like took out of your hands because. You've already given everything the permissions through the box. Like the box can hold your keys and that. So what I mean, so interesting. And people say, well, that's not very safe. But as long as your network's safe, your box is safe, you, you, your AI's safe, your Alexa's safe in it. It's about the, the, the safety of that. It's about the, the actual network safety, not the device safety. Ripple, this is it. it, this is it now, back again to 2015, promoting web standards and interoperability with the W3C, five years ago, Ripple Labs has joined the W3C web payments largest group, uh, interest group, sorry, as we continue our mission to enable the world to move money as easy as information moves on the web today. They've got a W3C web payment interest group and a W3C value web web settlement task force. And this chat with Stefan Thomas here, and like they have, they have an interview with Stefan Thomas, who's now doing COIL, I believe, isn't it? So Stefan Thomas, Ethan Swartz, and Agent Old Baylor, the main some of the main guys behind Interledger are now doing basically their own things, but still within Interledger parameters and protocols. It's W3C, overlooking it and that, understanding that there were a lot of parallels with the birth of the internet, with the birth of the, the, the value web. Yeah, that 402 page is interesting, isn't it? Right, so what they're really excited about is the concept of applying the new genius of the web to the new problem of payments. Especially if you consider that it is a problem the original architects of the World Wide Web intended to tackle but either never got round to it or were unable to figure out a problem or a viable solution. This is evident by the HTTP error 402, which is labeled payment required and was reserved for future use. As we know that functionality was never developed and 25 years later, we have this once in a lifetime chance to settle unfinished business and complete the actual internet, bringing value into the mix as well as data on goods. O 
Pull the shoulder boulder. <laughs> is that is that is that, that, that stuff flop 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 and flip flop app mate? The flip flop app is gonna be huge, mate. You wait for the white paper, bro. The flip flop app. It's gonna be epic. Flip flop in between any social media you want, any network. Don't need overlay joy, you need flip flop mate. Morning, Peter. Yeah, I'm about to. Um, I'm about to go and get myself some breakfast. So the guys in late, you know, the dance like you can. You can throw it back. We did right, right, right. We did cover a lot of interoperability and interledger stuff at the beginning. Really, we had a little overview of it, and I've I showcased a video of um, Chris Larson, also from our channel. Now, if I go back to that, y'all, y'all makes it easy to do this and easy to do that, y'all. Can you can't even save comments out of the top chat, can y'all? Can you open? Can you? Well, I guess um, Android peeps might be able to. Like maybe be able to save that little comment there. <laughs> Cookie Mon in the sauna again, mate. It's not actually well. It's getting a little warmer, but it's not really a sauna. But yeah, I've just linked Chris Larson video in there. And like I said before, if you just type love for crypto, Chris Larson. We've actually um, got a few videos of Chris Larson on the channel, right? From Chris Larson creating a sustainable global economy, what we streamed a month ago. We put that on a month ago. We had that one from a year ago, an hour 18 minutes. Loads of other little ones. You've got the globalization. Documentary, the two hour one, is there, year ago. That's at 62k views now, not quite as many as the fucking one world currency one's got, but we're not quite at globalization yet, are we? So, don't know how many people are actually interested in that, in that video yet specifically, but when we get to a global RTGS, it's gonna be evident that we saw what was coming with that documentary. Like I say, it's already a year old, so, Watch that, George Gammon. I'll have a look for it. I've got loads of stuff in here to watch. People's telling me to watch videos of this Quant Treasurer to, to see what it's all about and that. It's finding time to watch it all, guys. There's only so many, only so many hours in a day. We can't watch it and cover it all. It's why we need to help each other out. Other people need to look at certain things and fucking help me out now and then. <laughs> Do I need a team again? The, the t well, not that there's me and Boo at the moment, but we used to have a used to have a bigger team, and now we've got a smaller one. So it's what it is. Peter, appreciate it, mate. But Chris Larson <laughs> ripples so much. Chris Larson. He, he, he puts it in a good way in all his uh, presentations. There is a Corey Johnson one that's extremely similar, where Corey Johnson's basically saying the same shit, same pretty much the same presentation. There's Agent Hope Bailey presentations on it. There's Ethan Schwartz presentations on it. There's Stefan Thomas presentations on it. They've all done the presentations like that. That was just Chris Larson's versions. And as said, it gave him in multiple places over multiple years, it was that, that that was branched over two years itself. What's in that video from 2016 to the from the back end of 2016 to the back end of 2018, pushing into 2019, him still talking about it. So 
The internet took them a while. This will take them a while. It's interoperability of value being merged with the interoperability of data and goods that we've already got, becoming the trifecta. And then Ripple have got their own little trifecta of XRPL, Codius, and then ILP to lean on. Unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable, Jeff. Yeah, it is. Time to go and get another brew and some breaker. Bit of toast or something to think. Go and check on the cat. I locked him in the room this morning. Been bringing him out on the harness for him to get used to the garden. Um, I'm not saying, or I'm not trying to say the likes of Overledge or can't be used. We do. We have said in the past that we need platforms that can make applications that are going to let us swap the houses, let us swap our cars, let us swap our in-game assets across multiple chains. It's not that ILP can't do that. It's that the marketplaces and apps haven't been built yet. So if Overledge your operating system actually helps people build their maps, I'm all game for it. But they can build them just directly linked to Spring on their own network and linked to ILP and Codius. And they don't actually, I just don't see how they need Overledge or not that they can't use Overledge or the, the thing being it's going to cost them to use Overledge or cost them to run a gateway, cost them to build on it. They have to stake and stuff like that. It, they can just go and build for free on XRPL and Interledger Protocol. Don't really have to pay to build on it. That's the difference. It's free. Not only that, we've said before, Vitzvin builds his little little tip bot and gets 20 million donated to him. So you're going to want to spend money to possibly build on that. Or are you just going to build with the money you've already spent on your hosting and your equipment? It's all you need, your equipment and access to the software development kits access to an internet signal they're your base costs not actually staking qnt to open a gateway or staking xrp to open a gateway you might need to put 20 xrp in a wallet to open it but you don't need to fucking stake xrp in a validator or anything it's not how it how it works so i don't know why you you'd move to qnt where you have to start staking qnt to run a gateway and stuff it's why like you, we can, you can do it without them gateways you don't need them and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that it can't be used. I'm just saying that the people I know in the space and what I see them doing, even the people I don't actually know, but I still see them doing stuff, none of them using Overledger yet. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't mean institutions, corporations. I mean open source developers. Open source developers that are building stuff any of us can use. You can just go GitHub and GitHub clone it. Not that you can't do that with Overledger's code. But then you come to a point where it's like, right, give us buy some quant off us and put it in there if you want to run a gateway. No thanks. No thanks. Considering that coin market cap and ether scan show two different totals of coins, I think I'll leave it alone as well for now. There's some deceiving going on there somewhere, and it might just be coin market cap's website, not showing the true number of QNT available. But ether scan states that for over 45 million of them were created. So I'm wondering where the other 31 million are. We know where the XRP are, they're in an escrow. Where's the QNT? Don't know. Guys, not saying don't buy it. Go and buy some if you want some. Have a look at yourself, do your own research. Don't let anyone tell you what tokens to buy. Just let them show you tokens and look at it yourself. Make your own decision. Um, not that people can't influence your opinion and your decision, but fundamentally you make it on your own. Other people don't make it for you. Invest in yourself, invest in internet of value, figure out how to turn your hobbies into revenue. Not everyone wants to be a trader. So if you've given that a go and you're still struggling to find happiness, search within yourself to who you truly want to be and figure out how to create that person online. Treat it like a game. We will be doing more content on this moving forward because I want people to be happy and not just chasing the fucking moon, right? Seriously, not that we're, we're all not after a little bit of extra capital to live more comfortably, but we need to stop chasing the moon and just chase happiness and fulfillment before we chase riches. Mr. B, XRP, I'm actually legitimately closing the stream, but how do? Probably going to stay on for a couple of minutes now. How's it going, Mr. B? Can't cut it off when B just comes in and says hello. Can't, can't. Glitching. 
glitching. Glitching the Matrix. Torres back about. Torres back about. Let's get that retweeted out. Who's got a bit of long hair there, the lad? There's looking legit there, Torre. There's looking legit. People straight on, so we're just going to let this guy come back and steal our money a third time. Wake up, everyone. He's a fraud. That's a person who's not even... I guarantee that person's almost not even give any money to Cryptonera or to Crypto Wizard. Two companies that are still there, by the way. Still providing the service they originally <laughs> promised, by the way. Yeah. Don't be that person, guys. Be the person that's dreaming of building their own shit. And getting out of this fucking machine. Or at least creating your own little machine within the machine. It's got to be done. Doing well, thanks, Mr. B. I hope you're well, too. Wishing health and happiness to you and yours, mate. You know the dance. I hope you're happy, mate. Looking at his Twitter. Everyone follow Mr. BXRP on the Twitter. Halfway through 2020, yeah, the digital asset at Ripple. Oh, interesting, uh, interesting. Well, Ripple Insights. I need to start looking at Ripple Insights even more. Let me have a little dance at Ripple Insights here just before I go. Uh, hey, you, hey, you, hey, you can read that. You know the dance. Mr. B, do you want more of you, mate? You want more of you, lad? Ripple insights. Oh, I'm getting fucking twisty back there because I'm leaning over and twisted. Ooh. Ooh. That'll be a bad bat. Bad bat. That'll be a bad bat. Bad bat. June the 29th. Why I joined Ripple. Did you manage? Yeah, there's not been that much new. June twenty second, the chief bill or why real time payments are more important than ever is probably the best recent read. Um in recent weeks. That's June twenty second. Did we cover this? Did, probably, did I read through this? Sometimes I I some, talking about Mr. B sometimes mate, you do that like Carl, you, you forget what you've read to just yourself and what you've actually read in front of the camera at times. Like, yes, having a bit of exercise going. Good shit, that. It's all about exercise. It's all about activity levels. Remember, if you're not active enough, everything on the planet can be bad for you. Think about that. Everything. There's nothing on this planet that's good for you if you consume it too much while you're not while you're not active. Absolutely nothing. I don't care what you say. So the world's being pushed into a new normal where simple everyday tasks and functions are often taken for granted and becoming increasingly cumbersome. This is no short part due to COVID-19 pandemic and continues to force many essential operations like finance and payments into the digital realm out of necessity. However, this, it, it, I mean, we knew all that. It, it, it amazes me to saying that it's only happening now because of COVID. It's like COVID, COVID, fucking COVID, that. COVID. But it was all coming anyway. It's just now being, oh, because of COVID, we're going to have to do this, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, I get the AI in and we've got the trifecta. Oh, it's a shame we couldn't have a... Elf is wealth. SW, not wrong. Good morning. I'm going to go and get me brewski. I'm going to go and get me brewski. Apologies to everyone who's only just joined. Um, I'm going to start scheduling this shit. I'm going to have to start scheduling this shit. At least till they put me back on fucking side. The agencies are taking the piss. There's no working. 
So it looks like for the foreseeable future or the next week, maybe two, I'm still going to be doing this. So I think it's time that we we started having them just booking. I come on at eight o'clock, like British summertime at the moment, aren't we? So eight o'clock BST is when I will start scheduling these for. So tomorrow's Friday, we'll be on at eight o'clock. So about 10 half 10 maybe 11 if it goes to three hours like some of them do morning some real guy Warwick islands best spot on the med yeah it's uh it's, it's it's quality place to live the mediterranean again i don't care what anyone says it is it's like europe's caribbean in it basically it's, it is what it is it's a lovely place and people in the most part who live a healthy lifestyle in them places do live extremely long healthy lives not the people who are on the fucking beach from getting pissed every day not talking about them people we'll talk about people in the hills living off organic food and drink smashing it near that salt water breeze and lovely weather oh yeah that is like the dream either just on a mountain top off the coast with a salt water breeze coming in or legitimately lakeside it's one or the other it's one or the other it ain't going to be anything other than that in the end for like the, the feet up retirement as some would say but when i just like really stop giving a shit and just put my feet up to live the rest of my life the way i stop having mate you need to stop having desires and all that in the end so the sooner you stop it when you get to a certain age the better and you'll have a better later life not really desiring anything because you've fulfilled yourself in the three decades previously first two to three decades of life just learning who and what life's about who, who you're going to be and what you actually want to do if you look at a get to further the next three decades is actually doing that and implementing it and the three decades after that up to 90 years old is enjoying what you've built and just enjoying the rest of your life without too much desire it only desires to go a little bit longer at that point Fucking reruns of everything, aren't they? It's been doing my fucking head in. Anyway, I appreciate every single one of you who came in the chat today. Thank you very much. Like we say, invest in yourself, internet of value, digital assets, your hobbies. Start a YouTube channel, start a Shopify shop, start flipping from garage sales on eBay. Start a flaming steak channel. Carl, start a comedy channel, mate. Anything, anything. Just turn hobbies into revenue, guys. It's like legitimately hobbies into revenue and move forward. Then them them hobbies then turn in, can turn into fucking full on dreams becoming reality. They really can. And that's the reason we love crypto. We're loving XRP, ILP, Internet of Value, and every single one of you. Decide who you want to be. Get alpha. Get up there. And at that point, you're not going to give a shit. You're not going to give a shit what's in your bank. As long as the bills are paid, you're happy, you're welfare. You, what does it matter how many notes are in your bank? It fucking doesn't. Till the next one, guys. Laters.